Hello. Looks like we're live. <laughs> Something strange happened to the last stream. It lasted a second. That's my shortest stream so far. Not sure quite why that was. Um, which is frustrating because I imagine lots of people are over there at the moment waiting for the stream, but it's ended. So hopefully uh, people will come over to here. Uh, we'll see. Um, in fact, uh, Spiky Danto, could you quickly uh, go onto the other stream and post that there's a new stream in case they didn't get that message uh, to help me out there. Thank you, Spiky Danto. Nice to see you here, by the way. You're the only person. Uh, it's me and you. <laughs> Apparently there's 13 viewers. 16, there we go. Uh, hello, yes, we're here. Um, <laughs> you've learned so much in that one second. Well, uh, that's the power of Gabbit Media, you see. Um, it's just that we only need a second <laughs> interaction. That's all we need. I don't know what happened. Uh, I said start stream and then it said it is, it's ended and that was it. So <laughs> you got your cup of tea just in time for the stream. Love it, Alan. Nice work. Uh, Earth and Mo. Hello. Uh, Tom Kayak. Um, <laughs> the stream says not available. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit. It's annoying that you can't just restart a stream. As soon as it stops, that's it. And then you have to start a new one unless someone can tell me otherwise. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's YouTube streaming. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it? But because my channel's on YouTube, I think that's my only option, really. Um, if I went to something like Twitch, I don't think I'd have the same uh, audience at all, and uh, it wouldn't reach as many people. Um, yeah, so there we go. Anyway, today's stream, we're making game assets from start to finish. We'll see how we get on. We've only got, um, well, two hours-ish. It depends. But the reason I'm streaming today is because the college um, that I work at, Suffolk One, is closed because of uh, the virus, which we don't talk about. Uh, so um, yeah, so here I am and I'm doing the lesson online uh, and sharing it with you a lot. Um, so thanks for the Suffolk one and uh, shout out to all my students at, uh, um, who are supposed to be watching, but I imagine that they're probably just getting on with their work because they can get on with their coursework as well, to be honest. But if you are here, any of my students, do say hello if you want to. Um, you don't have to, of course. Uh, but it, the main reason I'm doing this is that if you've got any questions, uh, then it's easy to ask in the stream here. If you do want to ask a question, then at Grant Abbott, typo in the stream ticker, you have, ah, uh, oh, dudents. Uh, that's what I call them, dudents. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, it's, oh yeah, look, uh, hello to my students. <laughs> they don't mind being called that. My students are lovely. So they, they, they expect me to do that. I think most of my students know I'm dyslexic, so they expect these things. Big up Suffolk One, indeed, Sench. Uh, uh, why would we miss this? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, Gems, are you one of my students? Uh, well, you don't have to re respond to that. You can all be anonymous if you want. Um, who disliked already? Probably one of my students. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can you make an animation tutorial for us with step by step do you know I was thinking of doing that someone suggested that I did a um, animation of a toilet roll running away from people because uh, I don't know if it's happening in every other country but there seems to be a, a, a rush on toilet roll which just seems ludicrous, really. But still, there is. Um, so I thought uh, I thought that'd be quite a funny one. We could do that as an animation and we could do it together if you like. Uh, so tell me um, what your thoughts are. Uh, <laughs> not in Russia, though. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, so um, yeah, today we are making a cannon. So if you are a... <laughs> Hello, Rose. Uh, nice to see you on here. <laughs> Uh, cool stuff. Uh, so Rose is one of my students. Uh, nice, nice to see one student here. Well done for making it. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if you'll understand what I'm asking, but I'm trying to paint a seamless floor texture, but I can't get the paint to wrap tile with the tiling option. Does it work in 2.8? Uh, yep, it does. Uh, remind me of that later, and then I'll come to it when we do sort of UV unwrapping stuff. Okay. Uh, can you make a 2D thing in Blender? Yes, you can. You've got a uh, grease pencil and you've got, um, uh, you can just render things as 2D. There are three students here at least. Uh, Gems, are you a, a student then? Um, <laughs> I'm just having a look at what people are saying. Anyway, um, so 
uh, we're making canons if you uh, want to follow along I mean if you are one of my students uh, you're quite welcome to just carry on with the coursework you'll probably know all this stuff already but um, you might enjoy making one of these uh, canons so you can see these um, I've got some I've actually got p pistols on here as well now that's this is part of it really isn't it um, so um, when you're doing your reference images uh, don't just think right uh, there's my reference it's a canon and then copy that uh, that's a classic um, student mistake in a sense, but it's a beginner mistake as well, just trying to copy stuff that they see. Um, and in a sense, maybe that's not a bad idea if you're a complete beginner, uh, just copying something that you see uh, and sort of mimicry, then you sort of slowly build up um, your, your own ideas. Um, but have a look at lots of reference images. So first of all, I'm looking at cannons. There's a, that's a 3D model of a cannon, but then there are other 3D models and there's a real cannon. Oh, real references images, would you believe it? So uh, do that as well. Yeah, going to do your coursework, but still watch and learn stuff. Good idea, I like that. <laughs> uh, so lots of canons, as you can see. Uh, but it's not just canons. Uh, I've got sort of game art stylized canons as well. I quite like this sort of look here. It looks quite fun. I might go for more of this sort of style. There's um, simplified versions like this. Clash of Clans style, is that actual? is that actual Clash of Clans or is that just Clash of Clans style? I don't know. Uh, even um, where the cannon might be placed, so in situ as it were, and maybe on top of a castle. So if you're doing something really simple, maybe then you can expand it out and go in this direction as well. Uh, hello Breeze, nice to see you. Uh, just seeing if there's any other questions. Uh, lots of uh, Breeze and uh, Mo Yanto, and just saying hello. Um, <laughs> Corey S, nice to see you again. Paper Pags, oh. <laughs> Ink Plasm. <laughs> Pack drawings. Nice to see you all on here. Uh, how many have we got? We've got 130. Uh, so that's uh, more than I get in a lesson. So we're doing well today. Uh, so uh, in situ, like I say, on the top of towers or something. So you might want to go that um, bit further. I've also got these pistols because we were thinking, I was thinking maybe pistols as in flintlock pistols like this. But I wanted to look at the way they've done their sort of pistols because it's going to be stylized. We might have um, sort of these dents and things. Can you see how low poly this is as well? But it has that nice texture feel to it, and that wood and things like that. And I've got all sorts of flintlock pistols. I even got sort of metals that I like the look of. Uh, so I can sort of reference uh, just pa painted metal. And look at that for a brilliant looking cannon there. Absolutely love that one. That's just brilliant, isn't it? I like the skull and crossbones yeah, um, sort of motif on the... Um, on the cannonballs how cool is that this, uh, this just screams class this one doesn't it it's just brilliant um, anyway uh, so uh, a few reference images there and this to me I, I was just I've been collecting these um, for a while <laughs> over the last few hours um, just doing other things and then looking again at some more cannons and stuff um, and then dragging them across into pure ref so this is pure ref here as you can see floating around we talked about that in the last stream how do you sell, sell, sell your stuff, I think you meant. Um, we'll talk about that a bit later on. Just remind me of those things. <laughs> Not sure what you mean there, Rose. Um, is he streaming on Twitch too or just YouTube? Just YouTube. Um, yeah, so I'm not doing um, Twitch stuff. Uh, I might do one day. We'll see. Uh, would, that, would that help anybody? Would people prefer... Um, uh, what do you call it, Twitch? Okay, so uh, what I wanted to do to start off then, you're going to follow along. You don't have to follow along, of course, but you might like to follow along. Um, so uh, we'll start with the scene. Uh, try and get one of these cannons. Um, uh, so get a few reference images for yourself and uh, start uh, mapping it out. So if you are a beginner, I'll, I'll get, get my references up again. If you're a beginner, uh, go for something nice and simple maybe a simple shape like this uh, probably simpler than that even um, it's just a basic shape isn't it so try and keep everything really simple like the cannon on top here is fairly simple isn't it so nice and easy to start off with uh, if you're a oh thank you very much <laughs> that's very kind Milan always uh, a pleasure to see you and you're always coming on uh, quickly and Ooh, well, thank uh, you. Donating. Very much. That's really appreciated. I meant to turn that donation off actually because it's meant to be uh, for my students more than anything, but it's 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 always really well appreciated and keeps the channel going. Uh, maybe something like this is quite simple as well. Um, and uh, uh, this one's quite simplish, but it's got sort of ropes in there to make it more complicated. So, um, so think about your level, think about simplicity, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Do you have a Gmail? Yes, I do. Uh, it's grant.abbott at gmail.com. 
uh, do you have any advanced tutorials to keep me busy? Well, you can make this one advanced, Lewis. Um, so um, think about how you can therefore make this advanced. So if you, um, I'm going to sort of take the hand pro, um, hand painted approach and keep it nice and simple, but you might want to, um, to go a sort of procedural texture um, direction. Um, try and get, so let's say, take this one, you're going to remodel this one for some reason. Um, uh, looking at all those sort of, um, character elements within this texture how would you recreate those would you use a texture or would you texture paint uh, so think about all those different things um, so hopefully <laughs> you know, no Abbott original sketches today didn't have the time even though the other one was like five seconds worth of sketch but I didn't even have the time for that so I was uh, I meant to do a stream this morning but I had to go into college and sort of discuss um, our tactics for dealing with the issues <laughs> Um, yeah, just having a look. I, I probably will go through an animation tutorial at some point as well. Uh, maybe tomorrow even. Uh, have a bit of fun with that. Okay, so uh, think about the complexity. You can make this to your level. So we're thinking about um, if you're a beginner, nice and low poly. Maybe you're not even going to text. You're just going to carry on doing these things as a beginner level. If you're a bit more advanced, then you'll probably follow along the, the level that I'm doing. Um, so sort of intermediate we're doing sort of above beginner intermediate ish if you're advanced then you're trying to really uh, mimic uh, what you see or create something special okay uh, love some Syria I know you're not one of my students because I don't come from Syria um, Almo so I like that name um, anyway so uh, that's what you're working on at the moment so uh, whilst I'm chatting away on the stream uh, you can be creating that and then I'll I'll start in a minute and I'll show you um, how I'm gonna create it but we're making cannons. I suppose I should leave my reference images up um, to, as inspiration. So making cannons today. I'll give you a couple of minutes to just sort of think about and collect your own reference images. Okay, so collect reference images. I probably ought to put that up on the screen somewhere. Can I type, get another alert box? Let's get that out. All right, uh, the text, where's the text? There it is. Oh, it's all gone everywhere. Add source, right. And oh, oh it's this hard and I thought this is gonna be that's interesting because Yes it is, okay, so there it is, okay, right. Uh start gathering reference images. Oh, it's going well the stream so far. Definitely got this <laughs> got this live streaming teaching the thingy. Uh I'll Change the font of that. No, I won't because that's all over the place, isn't it? We'll just get there. Right, and I'll put that. Oh no, it's overtaken the other one. What's going on? Oh, I've messed this up badly. <laughs> that did not work. So what's this one doing then? Oh, I was up the top here. What the? Oh no, this is this has not gone well for me. They're both saying start. Oh, so you're going to have one text box. Oh, that's a bit. Irritating now, I've deleted the old text. Can I undo in here? Oh, thanks very much, Blender Guy. Uh, not able to catch tonight's stream, Ooh, so well, no thank you very insane much. donations. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> I appreciate um, all the support you've given me. Um, but yep, thanks, uh, and uh, it's always good to see you. Uh, so this is not happening for me, this text box, so I'm going to delete it. How do I delete it now? Remove. Okay. Oh, that is annoying. It's killed my other one. Okay, well, I'm a bit disappointed in this. Not very happy about it. Font size, there we go. Oh, that was that was hopeless, that was. Okay, so hopefully you're grab, uh, gathering reference images. This got me thinking of Geoffrey from The Fresh Prince. Cannons to the left of them. I mean, I did used to watch Fresh Prince of Air, but I cannot remember any of that. <laughs> oh, we could animate it. Oh, that would be good fun, wouldn't it? A uh, cannon, a toilet paper cannon. Oh, that's this is good. Kyle Cook, well done. <laughs> you made it. James Green, nice to see you as well. <laughs> yeah, two of my students. Toilet paper cannon is definitely, definitely the way, isn't it? Um, I'm liking it. I mean, it could be, could be a meme that just goes viral and uh, starts your meme career. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so uh, what? 
Uh, okay. Just thinking of how to... Shall I... Hmm, I might have that one as a reference image. Image. So that, that's the cool thing about PureRef as well. You can then click on your images and go to images and save. Where the heck is it? No, it's save, isn't it? Save as. I think it's save as. No, it's export. Oh, goodness me. What are you doing? Uh, images, export. That's. I'll get there in event, eventually. It's et scene, export. Selected image. Yay, you found it, Grant. Well done. Congratulations, mate. Uh, Canon. Canon ref. Oh, it's just giving me a path. Okay, no, no don't do that then. Just uh, select a folder. There we go. Right, and then let's bring it over in here. Over in here. I'm a little bit tired. I got this corona. This the 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 thing we don't talk about. Um, it's it's sort of getting to me slightly. Where I suppose because the school's closing, I'm going all sort of. Oh right, what's the tech? What, what's the tactic? What am I going to do? Uh, how am I going to do everything? So I suddenly woke up at half three and I've been up since half three, basically, um, thinking about school closures and how I'm going to do, uh, deal with that and uh, do the best for my students. Don't you know that, guys? It's about you. Hmm, low quality text. That is that is horrendous quality text, isn't it? What is going on with this? Ah, oh, there we go. That's better, but it's really big. Do you know, this This has gone a bit weird, hasn't it? Um, I feel like something has happened and it's not It's not a good thing. I'm going to get rid of my text, actually. My text box. Now I can't even... Oh, remove. There we go. Okay, we'll just get rid of it. Forget about that one. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just being silly about the coronavirus. Uh, because um, yeah, apparently YouTube is sort of... Uh, um, cutting videos and all sorts uh, with um, the words in. <laughs> but I don't think that that should be monitoring the stream at all. Uh, where was I? Um, oh, yes, I was bringing in a reference image. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a joke, really. Uh, it's good to m make light of these things, isn't it? That's the British way of doing things. Uh, we make light of things and we joke about ourselves um, so we don't take things too seriously. Stiff up a lip, old chap, as they say in England. Although they don't anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Falana Rucker. Um, Oliver Johnson, uh, you got up proper early. <laughs> uh, you mean you're up now, yeah? <laughs> uh, just uh, having a look. I don't think um, it would get demonetized. I'm not really worried about the sort of monetize. In fact, I didn't put adverts on this. I meant to um, cut off all the sort of revenue thing on on this uh, because it's it's more about uh, Suffolk One stuff uh, because I'm teaching the students from Suffolk One uh, so uh, you are still getting your reference images hopefully maybe you're starting to build your canon now so um, do follow along and uh, I wonder if we could I mean if you are part of the discord then you could post your links to discord maybe I'll show those uh, later on so if you're a discord link I think I might have removed it from the description thinking oh well because it's students. It's all very tricky, isn't it? Because um, it's all uh, sort of student child protection issues and all these sort of things that you have to think about. Um, <laughs> uh, we definitely will make it go boom. Uh, right, where am I? Um, we are, oh, where's my, not stylized tree trunks. We want simple game assets, Canon. Where's my image gone then? That's not very good, is it? I'm not very, not very impressed with that. Did I save it? Oh, there we go. It's still exporting. Oh, it's crashed, isn't it? Oh, this isn't really nice, is it? Oh, oh, it did work. Oh, oh, oh. Back to Blender. Refresh. There you are. There you are, Canon. Hey, look at that. Beautiful. So it's going to look a bit like that anyway. Oh, the Discord is in the description. Uh, so I left it in there. Um, so uh, if you want to post your images, where should we, what channel should we put it on? I'll just get the Discord up. Uh, to show me your progress even. That'd be quite fun, wouldn't it? We could do it really proper lesson style then, can't we? Uh, so you're going to show me your progress. We probably need a, do we need a specific, ah, uh, live stream links info. You can probably, yeah, just post in there. Uh, so uh, there's a suggestions thing. Uh, yeah, so in fact, so if you're in the Discord, live stream links info, uh, and you can just chuck it in here. Uh, so uh, your cannons, show me how you're getting on. <laughs> the cannon is chubbier than my ex. Oh, it's uh, brilliant. Loving it. 
loving the banter. It's, it's, it is like being in the classroom. There's that much banter um, in my class usually. I wonder if Noah's here. He's always the king of the banter. Anyway. Okay, just uh, sorting my windows out on my other screen. Okay, so I am going to start making the cannon. Uh, so uh, where shall we start? Where should we start? I mean, I suppose the the actual main cannon, the metal cannon, is a good place to start. Now this is low poly, so thinking about it, how, how are we going to start our shape? What are we going to do? Uh, thanks for subscribing, King Mala. <laughs> He's playing Counter Strike. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so. Um, oh, I've, I've, I've spelt cannon wrong in the, oh, oh no, I spelt cannon wrong as well, haven't I? Um, there's a double N for cannon. Oh, dear me. Dreadful. <laughs> uh, so how am I going to start off? How am I going to start off, people? Ah, there we go. Good. Corey S, 8 or 12 verts for uh, one ring to start. Yeah, uh, not a bad idea. 8 to 12, what do, people, what do other people think? I think that's a, a good plan. Um, so we'll start with the cylinder then. Yep. Is that the best way? Cylinder? Do we want to go cylinder? I reckon we probably do. Uh, and 8 to 12 is going to be good. Uh, divisible by 4. Why do I want it divisible by 4? Uh, so let's. Uh, so I'll do that. Delete. Shift A to add. Oh, screencast keys. Let's just turn those on. Thank you, JNM, for your screencast keys. Right. Shift A to add. Mesh cylinder. Okay. So here's the dialog box to change it. And we're changing this to 8 or 12. Let's have a look at 12. And that is, that's probably about right, I think. So I'm going to go for 12. Why do you make it divisible by 4? Quads. Hello, Zephyr. Nice to see you. Um, just seeing what people are saying. Oh, that, no, one's, no one's answered it completely. It, it quads, we're thinking quads, it's um, yes and no because actually you can sort of quadify the ends if you, um, so there is, uh, Gran loves his quads indeed. Um, but it's not just that, it's not just that, there's another reason. Having a think, I'm gonna be rotating this whilst we're, mirroring, freeze 014, you get a gold star. <laughs> or oh, going into teacher mode now, if I had a sticker, you'd get a sticker. Not that I ever have any stickers. Yeah. <laughs> What's my pre creative process to choose what to model? Just uh, looking at and getting inspiration from different places and thinking about my level as well. Uh, what can I produce? So when I was a beginner, is that going to be easy or is it going to be hard and all that sort of stuff as well? Um, oh, uh, just seeing. Oh, lots of people are putting stuff in the stream already, are you? Oh, no, you're not. No, no, sorry. Uh, I can't. <laughs> Someone's been typing in um, a completely foreign language. OK, so let's rotate this in the X 90 degrees. I mean, it's tricky, isn't it? Which way is the side for the cannon? And I'm going to go this way, but it doesn't matter too much. Uh, easy to subdivide. Uh, yep, that, that does help as well in terms of keeping it quads. Actually, that is a mortar rather than the cannon, isn't it? So uh, that's a very good point. Um, <laughs> now, um, I'm, when I'm modeling this, it's very important that uh, to say that I'm not going to model it based on actual cannons there'll be reference to cannons and it will go all stylized, but there may be things on it that probably won't work if it was a real cannon. And that's what stylization is before people say, oh, that would not work as a cannon. How would that fire a cannonball? Uh, the trajectory would be all wrong or something like that. Uh, I imagine that I'm going to get that today, Anna. Okay, so making the cannon. Uh, so into edit mode with tab, control R, to set a loop cup and scale it up. And then we can bring this bit out. So get your really basic shape to start off with. So let's uh, grab that in the Y, G then Y. Move that out a bit, inset it, and extrude. So we've got a basic cannon shape, okay? It's very, very simplistic. Um, but once we get the, the shape, we can then start beveling our edges if we need to. Now for my cannon, let's have another look at my reference images. I'm gonna have to move this screen somewhere else. So I've got quite a few screens up at the moment. One there, let's minimize that and get my references up. Oh, they're there. <laughs> and put them over here. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll minimize. Um, yeah. So just, um, I've got Discord open as well. So if people start posting on Discord, they can let me know. Uh, 
Uh, the stylus is perfect for a bunch of games, yes indeed. Physics are all wrong, yes indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um yeah so looking at my cannons let's bring those down again uh, i mean that's quite a cool approach isn't it i like this sort of ends like this i mean i'm going a bit sort of between a mortar and a cannon to be honest yep so it will look a bit like a mortar um and a cannon <laughs> uh, this one i quite like i like the end there give it a bit of shape and a bit of um interest um, especially a sort of lip like this on the end, I think that's going to look good. This one in particular I like, so I'm going to keep that as a sort of reference and keep that in mind when I'm doing mine. It's going to be metallic, so I'll do Control r there, and uh, 3 to select the face loops. Now, what do I press to, um, <laughs> to uh, select a face loop? Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> there are students on here, so uh, no rude language or anything like that, um, especially from my students. <laughs> so what, uh, thank you for my modifiers getting on that one for me. <laughs> so what do I press to get grab a face loop? A face loop. Think about that. I have a think. What am I going to press? Just looking at my cannon for now. Oh, it's a good cannon, that, isn't it? That's going to it's going to get a few pirates, that is. Alt click, indeed, yep. Yeah. Alt left click. So Alt left click, but it has to be that edge across the loop you want. Yep. Yeah. Extrude that out. Uh, now, actually, can I extrude and then Alt S? No, because that Alt S extrudes along the normals, but that's obviously I know I've Alt Z there, haven't I? Alt Alt S. Alt S. Oh, it does work. Yeah, that's what I was expecting it to do, and I was thinking, why is it not doing it? So I'm moving my mouse up and down. Alt S will extrude along the normals. And therefore, I don't actually have to um, uh, extrude and then scale and shift Y. Okay, so think about that. School, um, extrude, scale, shift Y. Um, hopefully, that makes sense to people. Okay, I'm gonna. I don't need this loop cut, so I can select that loop cut and delete dissolve edges. So not delete edges, dissolve edges. And I want to select this loop out around the outside and scale that out a bit, so it becomes more canonified. I think we need a loop at the back here. So in fact, I'm going to drag this one at the back. Uh, what's the edge slide? How do I edge slide, anybody? I want to slide this edge across the back, but I want to, don't want to just press G and move it, or because it might go all over the place. I mean, I could just press G, then Y. Um, but I want to edge slide. How do I do that? Edge slide. Like this. Edge slide. GG. I'm sure. Yep, there we go. Spiky Danto got there first. Well done. So I've got a, a, an edge slide there, and building a cannon like this beautiful good game good game <laughs> are people enjoying the uh teaching style at the moment uh and hopefully you're following along with me because that's part of the fun if you're not following along well um you shouldn't be here uh control b will bevel like this we don't want too much of a bevel because why do i not want to add uh too much of a bevel so, uh, and to add more cuts to your bevel, control B, and then to add more cuts, you can just increase the segments like this, or you can use the wheel on your mouse. Yeah, my boss will be watching me on YouTube. They will not, they've got so much to do at the moment. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm in bed, but still, you get on, get on Blender on your laptop. <laughs> Low poly indeed, R-J-U-R-U. Um, Ridger. Uh, well done. Uh, yep, so hopefully you're going to follow along uh, later then, aren't you, Dawn Monster? <laughs> is it, is, are there many people following along, actually? Uh, yeah, painting different materials, either in metallic and wood. Yeah, I, I'll do that at some point. In fact, I've got some, haven't I? Anyway, so there's my cannon. I'm going to move this further in, so G to grab in the Y. Just a little bit further in. There we go. This is fantastic. Live cannon. Trying to. Good job, DJ Candyman. Uh, hello, Ruthwick Rayo. Nah. Low poly. I'm following. Hey, Thomas Cooksey. Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> cool stuff. A couple of steps ahead. Nice to hear. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> This is quite amusing, actually. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's my uh, cannon. And looking back at it, what do we think of the end? 
I feel like I want to select these edge faces like this. So I can select one and press control plus and it will select it. And maybe just scale them up a little bit. Scale them in the Z, uh, not the Z, the Y I mean there. And just a bit more rounded, so it's a bit more sort of a, a chunky cannon. Real, it's more more and mortar to be fair. Oh, I pay to stay home here in Australia. Jason and the Great of the Great Awakening. Love that name. <laughs> okay, uh, so I've got my cannon. Um, I'll put it into position. Now this is interesting. Let's uh, press N and go to View. Uh, and we got. That's not uh, item is what I meant there, not you. Silly Billy. Okay, so we've got rotation around the X 90 degrees. Um, so we can set that. Well, I press Control A and set the rotation and scale. So it's 90 degrees and it's all set at one. Okay, now that's quite important because if I want to do any modifications, I can always reset um, the position by pressing Alt R. So if I, let's say, rotated it round into position and I thought, actually, I want to change something on this. Oh, but now it's really awkward because I've rotated it and I can't, let's say, grab these and grab them in the Y because, oh no, it's in the wires that way. Oh, what a pain. I can always press G Y Y because that's its local access because it has uh, the rotation set at, why do I keep doing that? I keep going to view instead of item. In object mode, I've got my rotation uh, not set to zero if, uh, because I haven't set it in this position. Hopefully that makes sense so it will have a local rotation. So I'll keep it like that. Um, but um, so you want to, I'll, in fact, I'll undo what I just did there with the rotation. I press control A, set the rotation scale at this point because I know it's nice and sort of perpendicular and I can rotate and it'll be fine. Um, but also, um, so once I've set that, um, I can then rotate it around the X to somewhere around here. So there's my sort of mortar position. And I'm just having a look, am I happy with this mortar? How it looks? Stop worrying about it. Um, uh, but we've got that rotation, but it's not set. So I can then edit this in place. Hopefully that makes sense. He's a chunky boy in the air. Isn't that right, Oliver? <laughs> he thick. <laughs> How do I grow my stream? Uh, that's a tricky one to answer. Um, <laughs> uh, I suppose get popular. <laughs> Uh, it's really impossible to answer because I don't know exactly um, your particular style, what you're doing and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, but uh, try, I suppose it's just about keeping consistent. Consistency, I think, is the key. Good quality content and consistent and regularly. Okay, so I'm going to make the side. So this sort of bit here. So let's shift A, add, mesh, cube. Oh, the dog's barking. Why is he barking? Scale in the Y, and we've got the side a bit, scale in the Z, and somewhere around there. Okay, let's go to side view with three on my numpad. Okay, make sure you, you are using front view, side view, and top view, uh, because it just makes it much easier to model. So um, I think, was it 3D Studio Max by default has these sort of windows out like this, uh, and then you can change these different views, and you can see it from different angles if you want to. Um, I don't want to do that, though. So I'm going to... Click in the middle there, right click, join areas. Now do that. Have you ever tried the 3D modeling program in VR? I'm loving uh, my VR for art. Um, it would be interesting to have a go at that, I've got to say, um, but I haven't yet. All right, let's move that down to there. And let's start modifying this shape. Okay, so this can have a mirror down here, but it also could have a mirror across the other side. Um, but for modeling sake, I'm just going to mirror it down the middle first and then I'll apply it and then mirror it across the other side. So I don't have to do everything twice. That makes sense. Having said that, I'm going to keep it really simple. So maybe I don't even need a mirror. Just two loop cuts here and probably bring this up. G then Z. Somewhere around there. That's quite nice and simple, isn't it? I mean, is that too simple? Grab in the X and bring it in a bit somewhere around there. I'm just sort of thinking about this area here. I mean, that does look kind of cool, really, doesn't it? So I might do the same on mine. So I um, added a cube and broken it up a bit. And let's bring these down. G then said it's going to go down and there's going to be some sidey bits on there. Let's just have a look at the best place for some sidey bits. Now with, with low poly work, um, 
I could extrude out from here and uh, then make it into a, a circle uh, and have a sort of cylinder popping out. But I don't think I really want to do that. Um, it's much easier just to actually stick a cylinder into it um, because that cylinder won't move. I mean, it might rotate with this object. I'm just sort of moving it up slightly to sort of see the center point. Center of gravity is going to be somewhere around here, isn't it? That is actually the, literally the center point. Can you stack mirrors too? Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, do you know, that's a really good point. Why don't I just stack the mirror? Yeah, I could, I could do that. So I could to have this as a mirror and then stack another mirror on top of it. Should we do that? We'll do that. Okay, I'll create a mirror. So going across the auto mirror. Don't follow along if this is too complicated, but I'm just showing you what you can do. So um, under, where's it gone? Edit. Auto mirror. And so we're going to mirror it in the x-axis. So it's going to mirror around that center point there. Um, auto mirror and into edit mode and you can see that mirror in the x-axis just there but I can also come to my modifiers let's just bring this up a little bit and so that's my x mirror it's got clipping on and everything and I can add a modifier another mirror where's the mirror gone where's my brain gone with just in the middle there and then choose this as my object and then it mirrors across the other side so I've got two mirrors one on this object and one going across the other side because I've used this object as my mirror point so uh, mirror object so instead of your center point it's the mirror object like that and you can get your little pipette out i call it a pipette instead of an eyedropper um, thank you very much falana rucker i am the man on yes indeed oh yes <laughs> um didn't you mirror it around an empty i could do but i'm mirroring it around this object so the cylinder which i ought, ought to start calling these some names shouldn't i but um but I've, uh, I've got rid of my outliner. What I could do is bring down another window here and have an outliner. Where's the outliner gone? Oh, it's over here, isn't it? I always forget where that is. Okay, so this is um, side support. And this is cannon. It's actually a mortar. Shall I put a double N this time? I'll try and spell it right. Try my best. Okay, um, so into side view. And we want our sort of cannon pivot point around there. So if I rotate this, it's going to rotate around the pivot point. So actually, I mean, does that look weighted right? It's probably a bit lower, so hmm, tricky, actually. Maybe maybe it would be around that point. Would that be the center? I mean, it's the center of the object in terms of distance away from the middle. But in terms of weight, it's not necessarily the center. So if I rotate, that's weird, if I rotate this, I think that's a bit too far over, so I'm going to bring it back to about here. Uh, and shift, so sh um, shift right click is what I'm doing to move my 3D cursor. And I think the center weight wise is going to be there. Shift A to add, and we're going to add a cylinder. Again, this is going to be very low poly, this one. So we'll go eight, I think. Just have a look at the top and think, is that too chunky? Let's um, scale this down but i don't want to scale it in here because what look, look what happens this disappears okay so i'll undo that and undo that and shift a to add mesh cylinder again but if i scale it down in here you've got the depth and you've got the radius uh, it keeps its um it it enables me to keep changing it okay move center of mass to widest point would that be yeah that probably would wouldn't it? that would work can you do that didn't know you could do that cool Okay, I'm now I'm going to rotate this. So um, when I've got, so this one's 12, but it's a bigger object, isn't it? So you're going to notice the kinks as it goes around the circle, whereas this one is eight. Um, so it's less, but you don't notice the kinks because it's much smaller from this distance. So rotate around the Y, 90 degrees. And there we go. We've got it sort of resting on there. I'll select them both now, grab it in the Z axis and move it across into the middle. So I'm just grabbing it and moving both of these objects together. Now you think, oh, why didn't I just put a, a, a um, cylinder all the way across the middle? But then I'll have UVs in here that I'll need to paint, and they don't need to be painted. So it is actually better to have two separate objects and just have it digging in like this. I'll just gr G then X to make, oh, grab that. Oh, there we go. I don't need that much. So into edit mode, into wireframe mode with Z, then wireframe. And I can select this face here. And let's go to top view. So again, use those views. GG, edge slide, good game and we're about there. I can actually delete that face now as well because we're never gonna see that face on the inside. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. And again, I can mirror this around this object. Let's go back to solid mode, select that, select the mirror, there's the mirror, and mirror object, we're going to choose 
the cannon. Ta-da, we got a nice simple cannon. It's a bit, looks a little bit, I think these can move in now. So if I go to edit mode, select all, actually, is that gonna work? That's interesting, G then X. I'm just sort of thinking, no, it's not because it's gonna be my original mirror that's changing. That's very interesting. So how would I move that inwards? So would I have to go to object mode? I'm not sure actually how to do that at that point to move it inwards and change that mirror. That's an interesting one that is. Two mirrors, don't know how to do that. Um, can you see my quandary here? I'm trying to uh, bring this in. G then X. Oh, that is working. I wasn't expecting that to work. Why wasn't that? Oh, I'm just, maybe I'm just being a bit thick today. Okay. So um, the only other thing that might be worth doing is sort of creating a sort of divot here for our um, rotating thing. Or maybe actually going over and round it might be even more fun. Just having a think, what do you reckon? Because there's this option of doing this, G then Z, oh no, um, E then Z, extrude and then Z, and then maybe scaling that in at the top a little bit in the Y axis. Just sort of seeing how far I can go before I lose its shape. And then uh, let's go to wireframe mode, grab this, and G then X, and move it out like that, back into solid mode. And you can see we don't actually really need to see the inside because it's touching there. So we've got a really sort of basic cannon. Uh, I think I'm, I'd probably prefer it like this, really. Yeah, what do you reckon? Okay, there's a few questions, so let's uh, see what people are saying. Um, yeah, stack mirrors, done that. Uh, move to the center of... Oh yeah, so mass the widest point. That's um. So if I, that was an interesting question. So you've got a set origin, origin to center of mass volume and center of mass surface. So there are two choices there. Let's uh, try them. So center of mass volume, and so I'll go to the side here. That's center of mass volume, and then there's center of mass. I'm sorry, center of mass surface, and then center of mass volume, and it's there. So we are quite close. So it looks like we're just sliding out, which won't make too much difference. Um, yeah, now I could have selected the um, the ring and set the origin to the middle of that widest point, but that's not necessarily the heaviest point. Um, so I'm just sort of thinking of the middle point. Uh, we are going to probably see more live streams due to COVID-19. <laughs> Move the mirror up. Just so I was seeing what people are saying on the stream. Add tires on the bottom. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's, let's, I like that. We're not, not tires, but we'll choose some wooden wheels, yeah? Um, I like the sound of that. So let's find some cool wooden wheels. So these ones are cool, aren't they? Just there. Oh, didn't mean to do that, meant to do that. These ones I like with the metal rim around them. Oh yes, probably do something like that. What do you reckon? People like that? <laughs> Hello Polybloom, nice to see you. Please answer Vito's question, Grant. Where is Vito's question? I missed it. Can you repeat it? Oh, um, how do you remove the mesh collisions after the model is completed? So I'm assuming you want to take this into a game engine. If you wanted to only have one area that was collidable, remove the mesh collisions. It, uh, you, you either put those on or not. You can just, in a game engine, you say, uh, remove that um, constraint, isn't it? Uh, not constraint, component. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question completely. Tank traction things. Wheels and an engine. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to keep this simple, remember? Uh, and we are uh, 45 minutes in and I still haven't made the model yet. <laughs> A Ferrari with a cannon on it. There we go. Nice and simple like that. Yeah, we'll go with that, Lewis. Thanks. <laughs> Metal rings for sure. Cool. Yay. Um, click collision again and it will go away. I'm, I'm confused what you're talking about with the collision. Hello, Top uh, Channel 101. I, I like your stream, by the way. If you haven't already, uh, have a look at Top Channel 101's channel. Uh, they, they do some fantastic stuff. Nice to see you on here. And uh, they've just started doing some live streams and they've excellent work. It really is. I'm really impressed. Uh, so take a look at that. Uh, yeah, so uh, the other way, um, I'll, I'll go through that uh, core, yes, yeah. So what you can do is select the cannon and select this ring 
and then um, so if I go into wireframe it makes more sense so I've got that ring you can press shift s which is cursor to selected and the cursor will go in the middle of that and uh, you can see that if that is definitely the center point I feel like the center point's a bit more that way for the weight um, so volume it probably is where the pivot point is um, then you, you get the idea thank you Pez I appreciate that <laughs> uh, you knew there was a geometry inside the axle I know it can you detect and fix the mesh afterwards? Uh, yes, you can. I can't remember how you do that, actually. Uh, there's a select option, I think, and there is sort of like inside faces somewhere around here. Hmm, I'm sure there is. Select all by trait, that could be it. Interior faces. There you go, that's it. So you can see if you've got interior faces anywhere. Um, and that's a common mistake that beginners make. It's uh, You see, I don't make it so much these days, so I forget where these things are, you know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, uh, Blazedge, Popper Witch. Do you know my godfather's name was Popper Witch? Uh, I, I'm, I might not be pronouncing it right. <laughs> I hope I am. But that's what we always said. Um, he was uh, Polish, uh, fought in the war. Um, it was uh, incredible stories he had. I uh, don't know why I'm going off on that. Uh, Non-manifold, it, it wouldn't be much of an issue in this, but um, it's best to get rid of them because we don't need them. Okay, uh, so hopefully you're sort of catching up if you're following along. I'm going to do some wheels next because that would be good fun. And I might do a little bit of an adaptation in here. Just sort of thinking what adapt, 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 adaptation, adaptation. We are gonna... <laughs> uh, thanks Milan for joining us, good to see you. Uh, where were we? Uh, making wheels, that was it. Uh, I was sort of half thinking of bringing this sort of curve up here so it goes round. I mean, probably wouldn't be with there. Um, we're going to need four wheels, but right, let's get let's get going with the wheels. Right, side view, shift, um, right click. <laughs> yeah, non-manifold is definitely an issue with 3D printed um, uh, models. Non-manifold means it's got holes in somewhere. So this is nice and solid. There's no gaps or anything. But let's say I did this. <gasps> we have non-manifold mesh. This is not joined together. Okay, so don't do that. Dangerous stuff, the non-manifold. Uh, so I'm adding, ah, now, I press Shift A and I only got this menu. What does that mean? What have I done? Oh, silly me, what have I done? Of course I did it on purpose to uh, teach you all about this stuff. What have I done? That's different. Hello, Akinaro, nice to see you. Uh, so what have I done, what have I done? Uh, I've only got a mesh menu. Why have I only got a mesh menu? Yeah, if you get flickering, there's multiple faces in the same spot. So you've got overlapping faces. Yep. Edit mode, exactly, Sigil Fish, you will first. You get a sticker. <laughs> That's me putting a sticker on it. looks quite weird, actually, if you're looking in the camera. Um, hello, Henos. Um, I can't pronounce your name, but I cannot remember you from last stream, but it's nice to see you on here again. Um, I was in Edinburgh, British Standard. What a great, <laughs> nice to see you here, the British Standard. Uh, chat is too fast. It is too fast. Uh, and uh, Sigil Fish, that I got in there quick, didn't they? Yep, so I'm in edit mode. And now Shift A and see how my menu changes. So if you ever get that and you're thinking, well, why have I only got mesh? Why can't I add my lights? It's because you're in edit mode. Um, cylinder, right. Now let's, uh, we'll, I'm going to rotate this around the Y, 90 degrees. So we can edit it in here, and then we can start changing the radius and think, well, we want them about that big. Now, that's a very chunky wheel now, isn't it? It looks a bit too... Well, actually, let's uh, change the depth. Um, I do want it chunky like that, but it's very blocky. I think we need to go up a bit with this. Divisible by 4 is always helpful, so we're on 12 again. Okay? So you can see the usefulness of having this menu here. As soon as I move it, G, then um, X, <gasps> the menu's gone. Okay? Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Um, hi, Grant. I just mentioned you in my new Blender profile under Peaky Blender. <laughs> That's a good name. Very clever. I like what you've done there. <laughs> um, uh, what tutorial are you recommending for beginner 
uh, after the one with Monster and, and Man. If you look on my website, I've kind of got them in an order, um, but there's there's a few actually um, that you could go on to. Maybe something with um, there's. In fact, what do I choose? I think the there's the low poly well is the next one on the list. There's the C shack as well. Might be a little bit simpler the C shack, so maybe go for that one and then the low poly well. Anyway, um, let's. Um, why am I pressing Alt D now, and then pressing Y? Why am I pressing Alt D? So what did that do? That's different. Alt D. Have a think. Cool. There are lots of questions. There's lots of people on actually. Two hundred sixty-four. I'm surprised there's that many because I thought we were a bit earlier and we wouldn't get the many. I wouldn't get the many. <laughs> Will you animate with shape keys? Yeah, that probably or lattices is the other way. Um, I haven't decided actually. Um, I won't be animating today anyway, but um, if I were to, link duplicates indeed. So, uh, so why am I uh, duplicating with link duplicates? I suppose that's a big and long question to ask answer, isn't it? Um, so, uh, same mesh, different object. Exactly that. That's a great way of surprise um, surprising it. Oh, my brain is going. It's just going. It's going. <laughs> Loop. Um, that's uh, describing it. That's the word I was, and that's what happened with with dyslexia. The more tired you get, uh, the more jumbled up your words go. So you can tell, and that's because of my lack of sleep, because of thinking about <laughs> coronavirus. But it's more thinking about what I was going to do about lessons and stuff like that. It's the life of a teacher for you. Okay, so I'll select the well, just one I need to select, and let's do a mirror. Add modifier mirror around this object. So re remember, mirror object just there. I'm just checking everything's right and mirror around the cannon. Uh, Giulio Fuentes, I think it is. Uh, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Brain don't work, so no good tomorrow. <laughs> I can't even say that. Can't even read the right. Um, yeah, copy something and changes the first happen on duplicates uh, and poly count. Uh, not necessarily. Um, will it affect the poly count? Uh, not no it won't it will always be the same poly count but it is good when you're rendering because it it will um instancing objects is quicker to render i could copy it and array it backwards um at the moment uh, have a look this one hasn't copied across even though it's a link duplicate so link duplicates don't always share the same modifier what i can do is select this one and select this one last my brain is really going i want to copy from the active object don't i Control L and uh, modifiers. Yeah, so you can Control L is link, uh, make links and modifiers. But I'm struggling a bit. My brain, I could not think then what the. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll be right for another. It looks like an hour. Um, we'll see how we get on anyway. Okay, so the last bit I'm going to do a bottom because otherwise it just doesn't seem to make sense. It looks kind of cool though. I, well, you know, it's my own work saying, oh yeah, you've done well there, Grant, haven't you? Nice work. Nice work, mate. Um, but uh, now doing this is going to be tricky. I could do a separate piece of wood going across here. There's no real need to do that, but it wouldn't make too much difference either. And in fact, that might be the best way to. I'm going to do that and I'm going to explain why. So the way I'm going to do it is. How am I going to do this? I, I'll probably just. Um, yeah, I'll do it in the middle. So Shift S, cursor to world origin, Shift A to. Um, to add <laughs> and choose a cube uh, then go to front view grab in the Z and move it to about there scale in the Z move it to about there it wants to be about the same chunkiness really doesn't it so I probably have to move these wheels down and scale in the X to about there okay uh, round to side view into wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing scale in the Y and move that out and then the last thing we probably want to move these wheels down don't we so let's grab those and those, G, then Z, move them down, side view, let's see we're nice and happy, and there we got this cool mortar machine, oh yeah, looking forward to blowing some stuff up, yeah. Um, uh, yes, I was hoping to get to Texture Painting Top Channel 101, uh, it'd be nice to know your real name, but uh, maybe you don't want to share that, not everybody does, um, it seems weird that calling you Top Channel 101, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem very personal. <laughs> but don't worry if you don't want to share it. Not many, lots of YouTubers don't actually, and I can understand. They don't want to be, um, whereas I'm, I don't know, I must be um, narcissistic and want people to know who I am. I'm Grant Abbott. You are watching Gabbit Media. Um, 
so uh actually could those wheels go down a bit more i don't know what do we reckon so this is a good point to sort of move around your object thing i mean it's very wide at the moment isn't it it feels a bit too wide in some ways i sort of like it though it's kind of funky little cute thing but very deadly <laughs> oh i love laughing at my own jokes right uh edit mode select that face i'm going to scale it out a bit um because it will sort of hide the inside so i'm going to paint that black but i'm worried that's not actually going to work in some ways where the normals might go a bit weird around this bit. I'm going to undo that. Uh, scrub that and forget I said it. Because um, when you're painting, if you're sort of going backwards on a normal, it sort of creates a sharp point and it can mess your painting up. So try not to do what I just did there. In fact, you're actually better off scaling in there. I don't know what I was thinking, but that must be my tiredness coming through. <laughs> just having a look. Uh, yep, texture painting today. Hopefully if we can get to that stage. It's a confetti cannon. Oh, I like the idea of that poly bloom. We could, oh, we could do an animation that sort of builds up and then explodes and it's just confetti. Oh, how about that? Happy accidents indeed. Uh, Manic Millennial. Nice to see you on there again. <laughs> Party cannon. Uh, wider is more stable. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we, we've got to think of stability um, because, of course, we are very concerned with the actual structure of our object to make sure it's um, definitely going to uh, work. Right, I'm actually going to move this because I think that center point is the center of weight because remember we did right click set origin and we went to center of mass volume and I think that is the center point so we want that to be around our sort of um, pivot point there it's all right if you have a tiny bit of touching um, <laughs> I don't know why that seemed to sound a bit weird um, and it's going through the bottom but I don't mind that and we can animate this really easily like this and point it in different directions and yet yeah, it's going through slightly but because of that chunkiness that's okay we can go through a little bit like that um, because i wanted to keep it nice and compact and chunky like this so that's cool no problems yep it's all looking good uh, there is one bit missing can you guess what it is it is shift right click shift a um i'm just thinking should i do it in a different way but it's kind of pointless so i'm just going to do a cylinder i mean i could do this with a curve but i'm thinking of the wick it is called a wick, isn't it? The sort of, um, because it's a can, a wick is the thing inside of a candle, but is it the same on a, uh, a cannon? Someone let me know. So you can do this with a curve, but I'm just going to do it with a cylinder again, but quite a low cylinder, five sides. Okay, let's uh, bring in the radius. So when it gets to that size, it still looks curved. Actually, you can even go for a square, but sometimes uh, there's in a cube, uh, and that can work still. Fuse. Fuse is the word. Oh, no. My brain is really going, isn't it? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> we've got another hour of this. Oh, you're looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, this model is a mixture of several different types. Indeed, it is. So have a look at So this is what I was encouraging people to, to um, do to start off with is get lots of reference images like this and then pick uh, sort of different things. And so I'm going for a bit of this one here and these sort of mortar styles but then it's got a bit of this one here because it's uh, not a mortar it's a weird fat cannon uh, so we've got that going on as well um yeah so mix your styles you, you could even go this sort of um it's you know this uh, artillery cannon isn't it sort of i suppose all cannons are artillery aren't they i don't know have a cup of coffee i don't drink coffee actually because of the caffeine <laughs> but i did actually to be fair i had a cup of tea before this because i was feeling tired i thought tea uh, I don't drink tea normally either. I have decaf, decaf tea, rooibos or whatever it's called. Um, now we're getting on to diet, aren't we? Probably ought to add some, uh, a drink of water. That would have made more sense, wouldn't it? Uh, right, so back to Blender. And let's rotate this and start pulling it out. Stylized wick, I think. So it's going to come out a bit like that. Uh, actually, have a, let's have a look at what other people have done with theirs. Because I'm just imagining it sort of becomes thicker as it becomes more frayed out the edge uh, putting my progress up on discord yes of course yeah please do please do uh, that's a good idea because you can see at the bottom of my screen i've got a little one there now so if you at me as well hey candy man nice work uh, oh sorry i'll bring this down so people can see so i'm showing your work off so lots of, uh, i'm assuming people are posting it don't mind me sharing it on the stream oh i just lost the the edge of discord there we go so what do we got uh, oh, this is interesting. I like that. <laughs> nice work, Sentry. <laughs> uh, 
actually is that century moon he's done that no it's, it's coke maple uh <laughs> but very interesting because that's interesting because i was doing that in the last live stream i was doing something similar to that so i think they're sort of responding to that um uh, yeah so this looks good and it's very similar to mine in the candy man uh, lewis thorpe like it oh if you step ahead with the textures as well this is cool isn't it uh, well i think it's cool it's fun so get your work up here uh, join the discord uh oh the blender illuminati is talking <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so let's uh, go three and um, face mode, scale it up, and I want control R and then maybe, is it going to go that way or that way? A little wick, not wick, fuse. <laughs> okay, I'm just moving my pivot point so I can see it. Looks like a little tail, doesn't it? I mean, maybe you sort of, um, it's a good way to give things uh, character is by, in this case, it's not um, anthropomorphizing, is it? It's uh, when you make something an animal, um, it's a bit slightly different, isn't it? But um, yeah, and that's kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, it, it does look slightly out of place though, doesn't it? I'm going to, um, uh, you can turn your overlays off here. So it just becomes it was sort of with, without a background. Oh yeah, and I was going to say, the reason I'm making this different like this uh, is that there is a slight gap there and I think that will be noticeable with the ambient occlusion when we turn it on and it will look like it's sort of pinned together like that. I think that will work. I mean, I imagine the wheels would be lowered down if it was going to... I, I kind of want to keep it chunky. Let's turn the overlays back on and grab in the Z because the wheels could be there. But that just, I don't know, it looks too structurally sound and it doesn't look as cute and funky as it does there. I mean, maybe a tiny bit lower. Uh, an experiment as well. So let's uh, go into edit mode and select all. Whoops. Select all with A and scale it up, and that will scale all of them up. Why is that? Maybe I didn't press Alt D on. Oh, there we go. You have to come out of edit mode. I'm liking that actually, that sort of chunky aspect as well. Maybe not quite as big. So I'll hold down Shift to sort of, um, what do you call it, to a smaller increments when you hold down Shift. Um, and a bit chunkier like that, I quite like. So I'm going to grab in the x-axis, move that out a bit. And this one as well. Let's go to top view. I should have just done those together. Grab in the x. Or I could have done it in edit mode, couldn't I? And that would have been better. Okay, that's looking cool. Um, I, I probably ought to move on a bit, but we could put... I was thinking metal rods in the middle. In fact, I will do that quickly. Um, I'll just copy this one. So side view, shift D to duplicate and put it roughly in the middle. Can I snap in this case? Uh, in fact, can I snap to 3D cursor? No, you can't. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just get it roughly in the middle. So let's have a look at that. That's not quite in the middle, is it? Oh, where's it gone? <laughs> Where are you? Let's go to wireframe mode. It's in the middle of here, isn't it? Get there. Right. Uh, G the next. So it's like that. And I'll scale it up a bit as well. And let's... I suppose if I select this, uh, Shift S cursor, cursor to selected, then I know where the middle is and I can just move it in there like that. Okay. Um, now I'm not making it the same as that one, but these two will be similar. So Alt D and then um, in the Y that way. Let's just go to side view and sort of line them up roughly. I suppose I'll select this Shift S cursor to selected and then I can see that I'm in the middle, G then Y. There, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Uh, let's see what we're looking like. Yay, quite fun. Now, I mean, we can make these a bit more stylized, perhaps. Uh, what I'm going to do... Yeah, so I'm in edit mode, into wireframe. Bigger in the rear. That's an interesting idea. Uh, I might do that. Uh, so G, then um, X to pull that out to there. and maybe scale this down a bit. And then it's got that sort of uh, wooden, uh, what do you call them, pin sort of thing, isn't it? And it's been hammered in. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be wood or not yet, but I, th I might do that. I quite like wooden things. So uh, front wheels bigger than the rear. Now, in order to do that, I would have to scale this up, but not in object, uh, not in edit mode. Uh, so scale and then shift X so it doesn't scale in the other axis. I quite like that look, actually. Nice thinking. Oh, actually, that's going to be tricky, though, isn't it? Because that will be higher up than... Uh, so, obviously, we've got this issue now of the size. So, I would have to then move this and this 
G then um, Z until they are level. And then I can get more precise looking at the grid on the floor, G then Z. And about there, that'd be fine. Uh, I think that's still working, isn't it? it? It looks a little bit odd, like, I suppose they wouldn't have to go all the way through, but I'd, you'd expect to see a bar go through there, wouldn't you? But I think that looks kind of fun. I quite like that idea of bigger wheels at the front. Uh, and they, they can still share the same UVs and same texture, even though that's scaled up, although the unwrapping process might be interesting. But we'll come to that in a bit. Yeah, we're going to do some hand painting. Um, we're going to keep it simple. Um, I'll probably go a bit more complicated, but we will uh, we'll do that uh, very, very shortly, actually. Uh, Earth is round. Uh, so oh, I suppose they could be sloped. <laughs> I don't want that way. Um, I suppose it could slope upwards even. The whole mechanism could slope upwards, couldn't it? Uh, so this, what I'm thinking is this and this, and then in the X, uh, rotate. Oh, I've still got the wheel selected. Select that and that and that. Ah, then I need the cannon as well. And this. <laughs> uh, rotate. And it could sort of go up like this slightly, couldn't it? I mean, is that making sense? Like, rotate there. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Yeah, that looks weird, doesn't it? Let's undo that. We'll keep it like this. I do like the sort of front wheels bigger. That's quite fun, isn't it? Okay. Quick wi ri wireframe, yes, indeed. Uh, so Z wireframe, there's a topology. It's, it's tricky to see, though, isn't it? Especially probably on your screens. It's quite tough, isn't it? Um, I suppose what I can do, actually, instead of wireframe like that, uh, let's select all and go into edit mode and you can sort of see the and deselect all alt a to deselect all and you can sort of see the wireframe there so we've got mirrors on there so we've got two mirrors mirror there and it's mirrored to the other side we've got this so it's all fairly simple this obviously will have to go into i mean you can quadify it quadify it so i'll show you but let's let's go to that into here with this face we can delete it so i went a bit whistly there delete um faces and then select this edge loop here did I get it? Yep. And then, uh, what is it? Uh, face menu. And then uh, grid fill. Okay, and it grid fills. I mean, it's not done in the best way, but it's done in an okay way. We can actually select that face there. And uh, G, then YY. So that's the local Y axis. So it's going out in that way. Uh, we don't really need to do it for this one because it will triangulate it when you send it to a game engine. In fact, when it renders it and everything, and that's fine. You can leave that as a n-gon same with these these will be fine as n-gons uh, because they're completely flat whereas that one uh, having a curve made sense it's, it's, hopefully that's making sense uh, may i know why you scaled in object mode and not in edit mode so uh, link duplicates uh, survive press so i'll grab this shift d uh, so that's just a normal duplicate and it's still got a mirror on. I'm going to turn that off for now. Okay, so if I press Alt-D now and uh, go into edit mode, you can see that this one will affect the other one. But link duplicates don't share the same scale as such. So if I go into object mode and scale this up, you can change them and then I can move this around. And that's, is that making sense? I can, if I do this and if I select all and scale in edit mode, it will affect them both. So anything you do in edit mode will affect the link duplicates. But you can add modifiers, you can scale, rotate, and move, obviously, and it won't affect the instances. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of those. Uh, grid fill is under faces, so in edit mode and under the face menu. Uh, if you're ever unsure where something is, F3 is your search, and you can type in grid, uh, grid fill there. Okay, uh, and you must have an edge loop selected to, so delete the face and then select the edge loop and then it will fill in the face again. Okay, uh, so we're ready for unwrapping. Now, uh, we can do this the quick way. Maybe we ought to do it the quick way, but I think there might be a few people out there. So we'll do it the long way. Yeah, we'll do it the long way. We'll be fine. Um, so that there might be a few people out there that want to sort of procedurally texture, not procedurally texture this, but texture it with actual textures, not paint. So that, And that's fine if you want to do it that way. Uh, and we're going to unwrap it so that you can do that okay um, but uh, it will also be good we could put a flame on the cannon wick yes indeed we could that'd be fun wouldn't it um, what was I saying <laughs> uh, 
what was I saying? Oh, unwrapping, yeah. So we'll try and unwrap it so that uh, you can do either hand painting or just texturing, okay? So let's start with the uh, cannon itself. In fact, let's save our work. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? So file, save as, um, oh, where am I? Canon. So um, let's think about naming conventions because this is for my class as well. I don't know if any students are still here, actually. They <laughs> probably think, I've had enough now. Oh, that's Raymond. Hello, Raymond. I didn't realize it was you saying that. Nice to see you on here. Um, so uh, Canon stylized uh, one. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, some people put the date on uh, on their actual files of when it was first made. Um, some people put names of the person that made it if you're working in a studio so they know who to contact uh, if they've got any issues and so forth. Okay, so the good naming convention. So Canon stylized one to start off with. Uh, will you be modeling the muzzle blast? Probably not. Maybe. I'm tempted. It's great fun, isn't it? It's good. Oh, I get so excited about these things. Can't help myself. Uh, okay, so let's think about how we're going to uh, cut this up. So certainly we'll want um, to go to edge mode, obviously, and we might as well cut this one and this one because that's going to be quite sort of dark and gray in there anyway. And uh, so control E mark seams. That's under the edge menu. Control E will take you to this menu. So they're the same thing. So control E, whoops, mark seams. Okay. So we're again, uh, no problem, DJ Candy. Nice to see you there. Uh, nice to see you here. And my brain is starting to go a little bit. So, oh, look at that. I like it. Uh, bad, bad luck. That's cool. Uh, can you ne next stage is to think about your wood textures and maybe separate them out a bit? Uh, bit of, <laughs> my, <laughs> my voice is going. But can you see? Uh, so maybe, maybe go a bit hand painted. Maybe actually texture this. So not just use uh, colors. So have a think. Uh, Kashagra Anand, there's your shout out. <laughs> okay, let's put that back. Um, all ready for unwrapping? Are all with me? Oh, my head feels a bit lightheaded. Cool. I am, I'm really tired. <laughs> but I'll be fine. I'm having lots of fun though. That's the main thing. It's perhaps a bit warm next to these lights. So I'm going to take my jumper off a bit. So that will give you a second to catch up. <laughs> Top channel, channel 101. That is disgraceful, your naming convention. None of that. Uh, DSDFS, <laughs> DDFSD. So you just slide your finger. That's what some of my students do. Uh, make sure you save your work <laughs> along the keyboard. And then when it comes to situations like this and that, and we need to find their work for them because they're not allowed into college. What did you last call it? Well, I called it. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine, can't you? <laughs> That's the way I get, um, yeah, uh, more likes. Is to um, <laughs> is to take my jumpers off. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a seam here because that's the less likely to be seen in there. So uh, you're trying to hide your seams. So Control E, mark seam, hide your seams. Now this is interesting at the back here. We do want a loop, and this is probably the best loop to choose. So it's going all the way around there and up there. But it doesn't need to um, because I've got a quad at the back. It's going up here as well. We don't really need to. So if I press um, click on that one and then control click on this one it will find that loop can you see it's going from there up to there and control E mark seam so that's like if I've got a piece of paper wrapped around my coke bottle that's the seam down the side to unwrap it to make it a 2d texture okay a secret for getting subs indeed it is I'm glad I, I didn't wear a weird t-shirt today so that's, that's a good job <laughs> So I've got sort of weird sort of, this is quite cold where we are. Um, I just have a thermal top on. We don't put the heating on. So I'm a, uh, <laughs> cheapskate. And so I just have um, a thermal on, but they look a bit weird sometimes. So I didn't want to have that on the stream. So let's see what this looks like when it's unwrapped. So let's go to the UV editing workspace. <laughs> Naming convention for you, Kyle Cook. It's nice to see that you're still here actually. And James Green, I notice as well do that with all my coursework coursework and they do it they do as well they're not joking that's what they do they just up and down the keyboard yep <laughs> or do you or are you joking okay uh, let's select all and you can see it's got a basic unwrap here already um, but that's kind of the default one that comes with your cylinder so you don't want to use that I wouldn't say so let's press U to unwrap oh it looks like there's some doubles there but anyway U to unwrap and unwrap 
Okay, not that great. Okay, because we've got this sort of weird stretch going on here and that's because it's trying at the bottom. So if you ever want to know where these are, you press this button up here, which is the link selected. Not joking at all, yes indeed, I know. James, disgraceful. <laughs> uh, UV sync selection just there. And if I now click on a face, you can see which face and where this sort of stretching is happening. Oh, and I think, oh, it's down here. Okay, I can sort that out. I'll sort that out, don't you worry. So let's select this one, um, so back to edge mode, select that one and clear seam. So I've selected it, control E, clear seam. And now I can just select this edge loop going around here and that will become a seam. Control E, mark seam. So I'm treating it as if it's a cylinder. So I'm gonna break this end up. So this squishy bit here, hopefully that will pan out a bit better. So select all, uh, mute to unwrap and unwrap. Okay, it's not the best unwrap this, but it takes a bit of time to sort it out and it, it's better to do this with add-ons basically like texture, um, it's not te texture atlas, there are add-ons that do, I can't remember what they're called now. But basically what they do is um, they even everything out nicely and you have to select your edges. So if I select that edge there and scale in the X zero, I can then flatten it out. But that, you can imagine that taking a while and actually I have to be off that mode as well in order to do that, so select all. Um, because it selects that one and that one. Scale X zero and then grab in the X and move it across and then line them all up so they're all nice and even. Uh, it's a bit of a pain. Now, yes, there is another option. So we're gonna undo that. Uh, well, undo those movements and U to unwrap and unwrap again. Now in this dialog box, you have got options. There's angle based and there's conformal, which does a slightly better job, okay? Uh, I can't remember what these methods actually mean so it's best to just to try them out. Someone else might be able to tell us on the stream. Uh, <laughs> I missed that. Uh, Basa Raf Hubla. Hubli. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a better unwrap and it's less distorted. So we can just go with that. That's fine. What we can also do as well, which will be helpful, is to put our margin at 0 0.06. Okay, watch what happens to my mesh when I do that. Can you see it separates our islands out? So when we're painting, they won't overlap each other by accident and sometimes that will happen. So giving yourself a bit of a margin like that, 0 0.06 is a nice margin, okay? So we're ready for painting for that object, that one object. But ideally, if this is gonna go into games, we need all these textures on one map really. So we need to go around and unwrap the others. So we'll do that now. So I'm gonna click on this. This should be a fairly straightforward unwrap. We can probably just go around uh, the edge here because uh, the wood grain, if we're doing a wood texture, that can be one side of the grain. In fact, you can isolate as well. I'll check Discord, I'll do that in a second. Uh, yep, remind me in a second as well. Oh uh, yeah, good point, uh, Ruben, thank you. Ruben Carvalho, if I'm pronouncing that right. Angle based is better for mechanic and conformal for organic. Yep, I've forgotten about that, that's good. Uh, my voice is very soothing, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I feel a bit frantic at the moment. I feel like I'm rushing to get it all in, in the time. So there we go, just going around there. Actually, do I want, I don't really want a mirror down the middle here. I think that could be uh, non-advantageous. So I'm gonna apply that first mirror. Remember I've got two mirrors on here. So you can see two mirrors and you, you can see which one's which. So if I do this, that's the mirror going across there, which I'm going to keep. But this one, I'm going to apply. So let's go to that one and apply the mirror. Can't do an edit mode though, so out of edit mode, into object mode and apply. And actually, if I apply that, I don't need this middle loop. So delete, dissolve edges. Now we can get rid of a few faces as well. That's handy. Uh, can you make islands for different UV? Uh, Yes, that's uh, that's why we're marking seams to create those islands. Does that make sense? Uh, let's, okay, let's, uh, while you're catching up and doing some unwrapping, let's have a look at Discord. That's quite a good idea to look at Discord. What the? <laughs> what a cool idea. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, Zed Rise, uh, love it. Roto Cannon. It's actually, it's a drone. It's like a, a steampunk drone that goes around cannoning people. Ah. Do you like my unwrap? That's good, but I think you might have a slight issue there. Um, because can you see all this texture space here? Do you know this is really handy having Discord to talk about what's going on and uh, people following along. So you've got this texture space here, I'll, I'll maximize this. And um, it's not gonna be used. So we need to try and spread these out so they're used more. 
Uh, now, when you unwrap, did you get an error message at all? Try quickly re-unwrapping again. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Spikey Danto. Okay, do another quick unwrap, and uh, can you show us the results again? Um, uh, and as soon as you, in fact, I'll show you. Um, cool, Lewis Thorpe, nice. Oh, subdivided. Is that low poly though? Uh, this is for game engines. Uh, it's worth thinking about. I mean, it, in a sense, it's uh, kind of fun uh, because it looks cleaner, doesn't it? But if it's in the game, you definitely don't want to subdivide. Okay, Spiky Danto. No, uh, so let's have a look. So if I, what was I talking about? Oh, yes. Um, so if I go to unwrap now, so let's select all you to unwrap and unwrap. Yeah, object has non-uniform scale and my unwrap's coming out really weird. So we don't want that error message. And we have to press Control A in, ob in object mode, Control A, and apply the scale again. So remember to apply the scale. Now if I go into there, select all, you to unwrap, and it's coming out weird still. Let's just go to angle base. What? Why is that coming out like this? Now is that a glitch or am I doing something weird? Oh, wait, I, I haven't marked any seams, have I? So let's <laughs> U to unwrap and let's do a smart UV project, for example. Okay, so you can see they come out okay because I've set the scale. Yeah, me being silly. Okay, let's, uh, so whilst you're catching up, that's not the right button, that's the one. Yay, that's a good unwrap, Thomas Cooksey. Uh, why does your unwrap look like this? That's a good unwrap. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, um, did you press smart UV project instead of unwrap? So when you mark seams, Let's go back to, so um, here we go. So I'm marking seams, uh, and uh, so if you don't mark seams, if you don't select all, you to unwrap, smart UV project will spread it all out like this, okay? Because it it makes up the seams for you. If you mark the seams, you press U to unwrap and you go to unwrap. But if you haven't marked any seams, it will come out really weird. It's even not it's not coming out at all. It's just keeping the old one. Um, but if you haven't marked any seams, it just doesn't work, okay? Does that make sense, Tom? Uh, but that looks actually quite a good unwrap because we're using a lot of texture space. You can go into your unwrap as well. Uh, I'll, I'll start marking the seams for this one. So along here, around here, around here. I'm pressing Alt left click and then I'm going to press Control E mark seam. Same around here. Whoops, not that one. That one along there, that one along there. Control E mark seam. Now if I try unwrapping this now, so select all, U to unwrap and unwrap, there's this weird bit in the middle. And there's no seam around the middle sort of island, so it's, it's strapping it all together. So we need a seam there. And I reckon we can have a seam here and here, so we don't have a one really long uh, mess. So Control E mark seam, select all, U to unwrap and unwrap. Okay, that's not awful, but it's not ideal. I suppose that's probably as good as we're going to get. But if we go to, um, yeah, just having a think, um, I can select my islands and I can move them around. G to grab. Now, which one is this? This is the bottom one. So we're hardly going to see that. So I can scale that down and move it across here. This one, we can't move much further, but I can put this one here, rotate it 90 degrees. And uh, this one as well, grab and select them both, scale them up and make the most of my UV space. Um, but, um, I mean, don't. Uh, hopefully you're not following along with this because actually we want to grab them all together and do this in a second, but I'm just showing you what you can do. <laughs> Looks like underwear, yeah. <laughs> Interesting stuff, eh? Okay, so that's uh, not, but can you see that long line there? It's taking up a, um, a lot of length, but we can't get it. Um, so I could even cut that in half, maybe add a seam at the top there as well to cut that one in half. So I'll show you what that, in fact, but you might want to keep that as one long piece of wood so you can sort of texture it along a piece of wood. Hopefully that makes sense. Then <laughs> hopefully I'm making sense with all this. Uh, but the more you do these things, um, the more sense it makes. Oh, look, we've got quite a lot of people on. I'm surprised. Um, I'm going to start uh, the drag bar, uh, drag it to the beginning and start again. Yeah, go for it. Um, <laughs> It needs a rotor blade, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's have a look, Spiky Danto, at how you got on the second time. Um, okay, so we're back onto the... Whoa, that's... Uh, so you, I think you've scaled it up out of the... So it must stay in this area. It's got to stay in this area. That's really important, okay? 
Um, are you taking a picture on your phone and then sending in? Because uh, do you uh, use the snipping tool? Oh no, you're on you're on a Mac, isn't it? Con are you on a Mac? Because I thought I saw Safari earlier. But Command Shift F4 is a screen grab, and then send that. Probably a bit easier. I don't know. It might not be that. Um, but yeah, so we need it. We must have it within the square and these bits as well. They've got to be in the square. Okay. Um, but you can then rescale them and place them in. Cool. Hey, this one looks good. Uh, it's gone a bit weird though around the corner here. Uh, I'm not sure what. If I rotate stuff, this happens. What is my mistake? So uh, if you rotate, if you've mirrored around your your main cannon piece, then every time you move that, the mirror is going to move with it and take the center point. So the mirror then becomes the center point that's over here, which is moved slightly. So rotate, um, remove any rotation from your cannon top, and it should be fine. Uh, so, but remember, that's your pivot point. So you move that cannon, then your mirror is going to move as well. If you don't want that, then just apply the mirror. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, I don't have a Twitch channel yet. No. Um, ah, um, is it um, Ang Angel Aguado Guerra? I used to have um, the Google Plus stuff, and you always used to share my stuff. I appreciate that. That's cool. Nice to see you on it. Um, I'm just having a look at what people are saying. Give you time to catch up as well, doesn't it? So that's good. Um, yes, that's quite right, Bulidos uh, 3D. Thank you. Yeah, there's no set amount for, for low poly. And sometimes it's actually even an art style as well. Oh, you said that as well. Um, uh, but it's it, it can be known as an art style. It's sort of developed that terminology. Uh, but generally, if you're talking games and you're talking low poly, you are talking about the poly count. But yes, it can be an art style as well. Um, and that's just how language develops, isn't it? We can't say it is definitely not an art style because it now is, uh, because that's what people are using it for. Um, right, let's go back to Blender. And uh, so we've unwrapped that. And again, uh, I'm unwrapping them and leaving them for now because we're going to unwrap them, uh, do one final unwrap all together and we put it all onto one map. You don't have to do that. Uh, no, I do, yeah, so I don't have a Twitch channel. Um, uh, is that something I should do? Uh, would that help people having a Twitch channel? Uh, let me know. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I need to unwrap the wheels. I mean, that's a simple unwrap. Uh, this one and this one, control E, mark seams. And then a seam at the bottom makes the most sense, but they might rotate if they're animated. So you're always gonna see the seam at some point, mark seam, select all, you to unwrap and unwrap. Now that object had non-uniform scale. Uh, let me just check though. Uh, that's a pain because now you might come across this problem uh, don't panic if you do but uh, if I try and set the scale now control a set scale it's going to come up with this error cannot apply to multi-user object so this is a linked duplicate and I've scaled it up now did I scale this one up let's have a look that one's okay so I can unwrap this one instead because it's got uniform scale it's going to work and it will um, unwrap the other one as well. So because they're linked duplicates, they share and unwrap and share the UV space. So let's select this one, select all, U to unwrap and unwrap, and that worked. It was exactly the same, so it didn't make much difference. And now what we're seeing is not a great unwrap because these um, faces are not taking up much space. I'm gonna scale it up, move it into the middle like this, and scale this one up and move it over the top of the other one. Now let's get them precisely. I probably um, let's do that again. Let's put them on top of each other first. Grab, and I can probably do a grid snap to make sure they're in. Yeah, increment. G. Oh, I need to actually turn snapping on though. Turn snapping on. There we go, and snap it to. Oh, that's annoying. It isn't actually snapping to my grid, is it? Oh, that's weird. I thought there'd be some snapping options there. Can I snap to vertex instead then? There, now they're on top of each other. That's what I wanted. Turn snapping off, select them both, and scale them up together. Now they're right on top of each other because they're the other side of each other, so we're not gonna notice that they're gonna be identical. So when I paint on one, it will paint on the other one as well, okay? Now remember, if you want to skip all this step, just select all, smart UV unwrap, uh, and you'll be fine. Uh, but I'm just going through and detailing the seams in case you wanted to add proper textures. So I'd have my wood texture and I'd just sort of place it over the top of this and that would make more sense. 
Um, uh, the channel itself, uh, the live stream, at the moment, I'm live streaming for my students uh, who are not at college. Uh, and we're doing what we might do in a lesson, although I'm going a bit further than I normally would. Um, but we're, So they're doing game design and they're modeling game objects. Uh, but I thought we'd open it up uh, and Suffolk One were uh, positive about that as well. That's where I work at college. And they said, yeah, op um, open it up to the rest of your YouTube viewers as well. Uh, so we're doing that. And we do this sort of thing, um, different art, 3D art. Uh, at the moment, game objects. But on Friday, I'll be doing a commission that I'm doing for a character. So it's character sculpt and eventually rig and so forth. And another time, we'll do some animation and all sorts. So that's what's going. Yeah, and you're quite right, Bolidos 3D. Um, you do not need uh, a clean unwrap that much if you're doing texture painting. It is useful though if you um, if you're doing it professionally, you do because you might send that texture to someone and they can easily edit it in something like Photoshop. But if if there's seams all over the place from a um, smart UV project, then it's not so good. Uh, yeah, okay, so Twitch is better for streaming, is it? I'll, I'll look into it uh, and see. I mean, there might be an issue with revenue as well because this channel obviously is a revenue for me um, about doing it on Twitch and YouTube. So I'll have to see about that. But it'll be interesting to know. Okay, so there's only a couple of things to unwrap still, this one. Um, so into there, select that face, Control E, Mark Seam, and then one seam down the edge here. Ooh, one seam. Control E, Mark Seams. And like I say, don't don't panic if you're not following along. Just do a smart UV project for now, and you'll be fine. So Control E Mark Scene. That should do it on the other ones as well. It has. That's good. And let's just get that one again down there. Control E Mark Scene. Now these might have an issue because I think I resized them. But let's have a look at um, in Object Mode N. It's it's still uniform scale because they're all the same. So that should be fine. This interactive stream where you keep looking at Discord is really fun. Nice. I better check Discord then, didn't I? So hopefully you're catching up with me. Uh, let me know if I'm going at the right speed as well. How come PayPal does not show up on the stream? Um, well, uh, you can donate to my PayPal if you're uh, kind enough to do so. Thank you. Um, and the links are in the description. Uh, and that's probably the easiest way. Uh, I'd, I'd appreciate it, of course. Uh, every donation is gratefully received. Um, let's go over to here and get this one. Oh, no, I haven't unwrapped those yet, have I? So what was I going to say? Yeah, these ones. They need unwrapping. So let's select them all. You to unwrap. Um, do you mean it's in, um, if you donate to my PayPal, does it uh, not appear on the stream? Ah, uh, perhaps I haven't set that fully up. I thought it was linked, but maybe it isn't. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Do you also teach your students how to use game engines like Unity and Unreal? We do touch slightly upon Unreal. We don't go into a lot of depth, but we will be doing more of that next year. We're actually going to be using constructs to keep it nice and simple. And uh, there'll be bits and pieces in Unity as well. So we do a bit of that as well. Um, okay, so unwrap. And it's done this weird unwrap. It hasn't quite worked. Now have a think. Why has that not worked for me? So um, we've got the end face here, as I expected. Then we've got... Um, the outside polygons here, but we've got an extra face. There's an extra face there. So let's go to isolation mode and have a closer look at our object. And I forgot to delete this face, basically. That's what I did. So three to face mode, that face, delete, and faces. And you can see it disappear there. And now when we select all and unwrap again, it comes out better. We can grab this one as well and make a bit more space for that. Uh, because that'll be right on the end there. So we can scale that up a fair bit. There we go. And that's useful. Although actually I'm unwrapping these again later on. I keep forgetting I'm doing that. Okay, last one. Have I done this? Select, oh, I've unwrapped that already by looks things. I'm gonna just double check that. Select all, you to unwrap and unwrap. Yeah, so that's got an extra face as well. I didn't realize. So in here, three, that face there, delete faces. We don't need it. So select all, you unwrap. And there we go, it's looking good. And I can scale that up to about there. Again, I don't need to edit that just yet. So we're almost there. I think it's just this one at the bottom here that needs an unwrap. So let's select that. And probably the simplest way, we can mirror the top. Actually, we're not going to mirror the top and bottom in this case. I'm just having a think. Yeah, no, I've made a mistake, but that's fine. Um, I'll 
come out, I'll come to that in a second. Control E mark scene, select top one, control E mark scene, and actually select all and control E mark scene. Just make make them all the same. Select all and unwrap, and they're all squares. Ah, non uniform scale though. Can you see how they came out weird? Select all, control A. I'm going a bit quicker now to sort of speed things up a bit. And uh, now go back into edit mode, you to unwrap, unwrap, and see how different that is when it uh, works out its scale. Um, it's not particularly nicely unwrapped, but there's not a, a particularly good way of unwrapping that. So um, I've unwrapped everything. Um, so uh, now this is the same as that. So I can just hide those for the moment because they don't need to be in my unwrap. Uh, that's non-uniform scale. That won't matter though too much. Okay, at this point, I'm going to make everything a single object. So I'm going to sort of get rid of the Alt D that I've done because I don't want instances when I'm painting uh, because I want them all to have sort of separate UV space and stuff like that. And it will make sense why, because it, you can't unwrap very easily when you've got um, duplicates on. And basically I want to select all in edit mode, select all, a new and unwrap. Uh, but we get that non-uniform scale and it's going all over the place here. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to do. I mean, in some ways, I could make all these um, the same object. I'm just having to think whether that's useful, but these will be exactly the same, so that'd be kind of pointless. But then, no, they won't be, they won't, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, so if you ever want to sort of remove any uh, instances um, or modifiers and stuff like that, you can select all, object, convert to mesh uh, from curve and it just removes everything, instances, mirrors, and all sorts, and now they're all separate objects. I can then select everything. Uh, Control A to reset the scale. Oh, it, it didn't remove that, okay. I thought it would remove that as well, but object relationships is that instance, and remember we did Alt D. Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll come to these questions in a second. So Alt D and uh, make single user object and data selected objects. Uh, and that will remove any instances. So I'll do that again. Object relations is under relations. Make single user. So rather than being a linked duplicate, you're making a single user again. So they'll all be separate and we'll be able to edit them separately. Um, I should, probably shouldn't have at this stage. It's probably a bit confusing to do li linked duplicates um, because I would actually, if I was doing this a different way, but I probably confused people there. I hope I haven't. But object and data is what you want to get rid of. So under object relations, uh, single user, object and data. Okay, so now it's all uh, separate objects and you can see them unwrapped there. I could re-unwrap by pressing U, oh, non-uniform scale, so I obviously didn't do that. Control A, scale, back in, select all, U to unwrap, and it's better, but something's weird. This is weird, so I can find out what that is, this object here, and it's overlapping the other ones for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that, and this one uh, select all. It's doing something a bit odd. I think that's a, a glitch actually. So I'm going to save it. Uh, yeah, I th it must be. It's, um, I can't quite work out what it's doing. This is not allowing me to click on those bits and pieces. Unless there's something I haven't unwrapped. Probably something I hadn't, haven't unwrapped. Everything looks okay though. You unwrap. Let's go conformal. That's fine as well. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, Rick Hatsy, is that right? How you pronounce it? Uh, thank you very much. I'm much appreciated, um, as always. That's, that's brilliant of you. The Fuse, that's what it is. Well done. Uh, Gavit2k, who's called themselves Gavit2k. Ooh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Fuse at the end, I forgot to do. So let's select on that. Press L to select linked object and isolate. Oh, it's not going to let me isolate in. So Shift H will hide everything else. And I'm going to get rid of that face there, which we don't need. Delete faces, and I'm going to unwrap it. So Control E, Mark Seam, and let's get the bit down the bottom. So I was thinking, what? There must be a glitch, but no, it was me all along. Mark Seam. Okay, and now I can sh uh, Alt H is unhide. Select all. You to unwrap. And now they're all spread out. Probably a little bit too much distance between them all. So we can go 0 0.01. Let's see what that looks like. Cool, that's a bit close now. Let's have a look. Oh no, that's all right. That's a good distance apart, enough to paint on. 
that'll all be fine. And can you see how it's separate them out? Now everything on there is all into these islands and nicely mapped out and spaced out. Um, so there we go. Uh, it, um, now that may have been too complicated. If that's too complicated for you, the easy way, you don't have to mark any seams, uh, select them all, join them all together and press uh, U to unwrap and Smart UV Project. If you have any problems with that because of the link duplicates and things like that, um, uh, it may be that you might have to go up to UV and press Average Island Scale. Mine are all mapped out correctly, so they've all got Control A, so the scale set. But if you Average Island Scale, that should help you with that. But there, if there's anything that's not scaled, it's in Set to Scale, uh, that might come out weird in your UVs. It shouldn't cause you major issues though, so don't panic too much. You can still carry on with the rest of it. Um, how do you decide which... Sorry, I've got a few questions earlier on. Um, so I'm just going to go to those. May I, uh, maybe I missed this, but what's the significance of utilizing texture space efficiently? I mean, can we not unwrap and paint and then repeat this for other parts of asset? Yeah, you could... You can have a separate texture for the cannon, separate texture for the wood and wheels and so forth, but they're all a different texture and therefore you've got uh, like 10 different textures for this one cannon and that would be sort of a bit over the top for a game engine. And it's not always the texture resolution you have to worry about. So they might be really small textures, but they're called texture draw calls. So it's always looking for those textures and that takes time uh, for your graphics card so it can, you can drop frames in your game. Um, so ideally, you put them all onto one like this by joining them together with Control J. Uh, uh, and if you're having problems with that, make sure you, um, again, object, convert to mesh from curve, and that will get rid of all the mirrors and things like that. Uh, and if you're having any relationship problems, which is your instancing, relationships, uh, make single user. Okay, and that will sort of delete any sort of, um, or remove any mirrors and just apply them. Okay, um, I'm always apprehensive. So this is that was uh, Basavrij uh, Hubli. I'm sorry, I'm, um, my brain is fried. So reading things is even harder for me because of my dyslexia. Uh, Z Rise. That's a nice easy one for me to pronounce. Um, I'm always apprehensive about uh, pushing objects through each other like you did with the wheel axis. Are there ever right and wrong time to do this? If this was going to be animated and warp and move, um, that might. Uh, be a problem and it might come through and away from the object. Generally small little objects like this, like the fuse and stuff like that, let's just, actually that probably needs to go in a little bit more actually. Let's just um, wireframe that. Oh that goes in enough, no that's Ooh, fine. well thank you very much. Oh, did someone else donate? That's very kind. <laughs> uh, Chance McDonald, nice to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you for a little while, I don't think. <laughs> Although I've done a couple of streams recently that I didn't notice you in. Nice to see you. Howdy, I love that. Uh, are, are you from um, is it was it Austin or something Texas? Uh, I'm not sure. Or are you just saying howdy and uh, sort of in an American way? <laughs> nice to see you on it. Uh, where, where were we anyway? Um, so, so it's okay to sort of indent them, especially when you're doing low poly stuff. You can indent them like this. If it's higher poly, then yes, the ideal is to make them um, so they're all from one model. But uh, yeah, am I making sense? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, right. Uh, let's we'll have a look at progress in a second. A basu, uh, nickname and shorthand. Thank you, basu. <laughs> uh, 4D modding. At some point, could you demo the use of UDIMs? Yet yeah, I've not used UDIMs myself because I've not had a need because I do all sort of low poly stuff and I haven't done many high poly models for games. Um, I've done them sort of for other things, and or it's never quite. Uh, been necessary for me. Uh, so I need to look up and ex know exactly what I'm talking about before I go into teaching it. Um, so I need a bit more knowledge about it and finding out about it. Um, if relationship problems make single use. <laughs> yeah, we didn't really think about what I was saying there, did I, David? Uh, hopefully, I haven't upset anybody with that. If you've got relationship problems out there, uh, then um, yeah, make single user. That sorts them all out. Uh, hello, Santosh Kra Singh. <laughs> okay, so we've got to this point and we are ready to paint. Um, what are we for? So how long have we been going? Oh, that w uh, so we've only got a quarter of an hour. Um, if it's a two-hour stream, maybe I'll go on for a bit longer. We'll see. See how we do. Um, so we're, we've done the unwrap. Let's have a look at our unwrap again. Let's select, um, go into edit mode, select all, and it's all unwrapped. Okay. Um, 
uh, tile paint unwrap. Yeah, so uh, when you say tile paint unwrap seamless textures. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, now, now what you need to do in that case, and it, it takes a bit of um, knowledge in other programs. So I would use Photoshop for that. So making seamless textures, is that what you mean? Making seamless textures. Because um, I, I mean, it's it's um, who who's asking that uh, critical fill is that what you meant? Paint tile seamless. Does, but um, because that that's they're kind of two different things. There you got tile textures and you use t seamless textures to tile your texture. Um, I'm assuming unless I'm misunderstanding uh, the the wording you're using. Uh, yeah, seamless textures is going to be a separate tutorial in its own right, to be honest, because what you have to do, you have to take it into a program like Photoshop uh, and there's this thing called where you shift it and then you sort of merge paint in the middle and then shift it back and then it, it becomes seamless. It's quite a clever trick, but if you look up how to paint similar seamless textures on YouTube, it will explain it uh, and maybe I'll do that another time if that's all right. He means using a tiled brush yes you do need a seamless texture okay yeah so um using a tiled brush we'll come to in a second yep uh if that's what you were asking hopefully we'll get yeah, there offset thank you ian bishop appreciate it i was thinking what is that thing what would you do so you offset the texture then you clone it in the middle and then you bring it back and it sort of merges and then you sort of offset it to check oh does cg geek have a good video about it thank you spiky dento that will help uh, so if you search on people's channels uh seamless texture tile brushes and so forth then hopefully CG Geek will help you out. Um, just having a look through some of the questions, I might sort of ignore a few questions that aren't particularly relevant to what we're doing today, and we can mention them another time, hopefully, um, or or maybe email me if you're really struggling. Um, okay, so we've got our texture. Now we go to the texture paint, the texture paint panel up the top here. So texture paint. Now let's uh, move in. What I like to do with texture paint, so you can see what's going on, is bring out a new screen. Now watch out for this. Your cursor changes to this cross, and just slightly to the side here, pull it down, and you'll create a new screen, a uh, new window, sorry, and change that to the shader editor if you want to follow along. Then press N to get rid of that toolbar. So we've got no texture in here, so uh, at the moment, the um, you can see this purple blob on there. Are they all joined together? Did I join them together? Uh, do you know I've kept them as a separate object, which is fine. Uh, so I didn't actually press Control J. I just uh, went in and um, unwrapped them all together. So you, um, that's the cool thing about Blender at the moment. I'll just go to the UV uh, editing. Oh, it's up here, isn't it? UV editor. So you can see that um, you can also join them all together. And then when you're painting, you sort of have to hide faces. But I, I, in this way, I can just hide objects. But I do have to sort of switch around between objects which can be a bit of a pain but that should be fine um i just let me look at what people are saying ah oh, well done so you're sharing the youtube link brilliant stuff procedural textures probably better than handmade seamless textures perhaps it depends what level you're at as well sometimes it's just quicker to do a seamless texture if you're not particularly good at the um, procedural stuff um, anyway, uh, so uh, I'm ready to paint. So uh, at the moment I have uh, one. So let's start with, ooh, uh, let's go to object mode here. Start with the cannon. Okay, nice big object to start painting with. Um, and I'm ready to texture paint. So I need to create a new texture. Now, if you are going down the just the texture route and you want to just plug in um, a simple texture, you'll go to the shading tag, uh, shading tab workspace. So just here and um, I could give this a new texture and then uh, find some sort of ca canon based textures. Let's see what I've got actually. Uh, so you press shift. In fact, so you can just search. So I'll just go to my, hold on a second. Uh, e drive, blender staff, textures, um, textures. Actually, yeah, there we go. Right, so I've got um, all sorts of textures here. Um, I'll make my icons big. Right click, view, extra large and find any sort of metal. Probably got a metallic section, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so there's a really naff metal texture. You can click and drag that in, okay? 
uh, just for now because I'm not going to do it like this but you'll see when we hook that up ta-da we've got our texture it looks a bit naff at the moment you'll probably need to sort of give it a bit more roughness maybe a bit of specular and you've got a simple cannon okay it's not the best way in my opinion because we want some shading in here I mean you can add across the render tab over here add some ambient occlusion and up the distance and that gives it some ambient occlusion which makes it look a bit better uh, there's other things you can do but that's if you want to go the sort of cheap easy way you can just go around add some wood to this uh, and if you've done a proper unwrap you'll be you'll be fine and you can add a wood texture to this one but that's not the way I want to do it um, you can if you uh, save this texture on a different name you can start painting on this if I go to texture paint now uh, it's got that texture up here and if I start painting you'll see I can actually paint on this texture so I could come across to here use my uh, screen brush and maybe bring down the strength just a touch from one and just highlight the edges a bit so you can see can you see it doing that there sort of highlighting those edges um, around and actually I probably would want to um, use my mirror tool uh, where are you oh symmetry <laughs> uh, in the X and when I do this it will appear on the other side and you could uh, turn up screen go to multiply and then uh, make my brush darker and paint in here with a bit more strength I think like this so you can see it's it's editing there and it's uh, having some effect on my Canon okay so you can do that it's very shiny though isn't it I'll turn that spectral ah oh, um, be careful I'm on uh, just the solid mode solid shading mode there uh, I need to be in um, EV and there you can sort of see the effects of my dark circle inside and highlight there and then you could go in and uh, multiply around here as well a bit, of, a bit of shading around here as well but actually you might not want shading around there if you're going to animate it but you can see already it looks a little bit like a can okay but I'm going to undo all that and in fact I'm just going to get go to shading uh, close that down in fact right. shading uh, get rid of this in fact just delete that whole texture okay and go back to the texture paint so we can do some texture painting did I oh you could use the metallic slider as well generally I tend to paint in the metal but you could use the metallic slider as well and that could help you yep um, okay so we want to create a new texture but we we can do it up here but we can also do it down here so no textures available so we press the plus sign uh, base color and we call this Canon color uh, and 1024 by 1024 is quite big um, I think it's a good idea to just go for a mid gray so you can sort of see it change and see the outline we don't need the alpha because we're not doing any transparencies and that's what that's for and press OK it changes it to a mid gray okay and it creates this uh, material slot here I'm going to call this Canon so we've got a material called Canon the Canon color is plugged in to the color as you can see there and yes you can you can do all sorts of things with this um, create masks for the roughness and so forth um, thank you Spike Danto good to see you uh, just seeing what people are saying now if you have different textures for different things then you can have a metal one or a uh, sort of dielectric one and so forth so you can separate it out and paint different objects but you'll need uh, different UV maps or, no you won't necessarily you don't need different UV maps but um, it will it it's always another texture call that it's asking to see actually no it's not is it because you'll be using the same no yeah you'll be using a different texture if you're doing it metallic and stuff I suppose I mean you can, yeah um, I'm going off on one there because I'm thinking of different ways you could get around that but ideally you don't do that uh, maybe I'll go into this quicksels at some point yeah um, so but generally I'm just going to paint it all on this one Canon color so ba what I'm going to do is go into object mode select all and make sure my Canon is the selected object so it's the main object control L and link the materials now they'll all go gray so they're all showing this one Canon material so I can still separate them out so paint on them separately but they're all going to paint on that one material which is Canon color which is just there that gray material so if I go to texture paint mode and start painting you can see it appear there if I choose a different object so let's go to object mode and choose this and start uh, texture painting and I can paint there and it paints on there so you can see I'm painting around my object I don't really need the mask tool for this I don't think it's a complicated enough mesh to do that 
Okay, so uh, we've got a few minutes left to just, uh, we'll do some really basic stuff, okay? And you can sort of do the rest yourselves. Let's put my handy glove on. Um, and just to start off with, I'll put my webcam on so you can see uh, just my screen. Uh, so I'm using a Mobile Studio Pro so you can see there, and there's, uh, there's my pen. I set my middle mouse button to, uh, uh, sorry, I set my uh, pen button to middle mouse. That's the only thing you need to change in your Wacom settings or your Huey on settings or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> real mask for, for Corona. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we don't use masks because uh, the hospitals need them. Uh, looking great. Thanks, Angel Arrow, the Angel Arrow. Uh, Grant, why you're not wearing a mask? Uh, because I'm indoors in my house. I don't think it's here anyway. I think we're all right. Uh, okay, so, uh, sorry, any other questions? I suppose I ought to, uh, well, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna quickly do some simple stuff. So the Canon texture, uh, I'm gonna leave mid gray, but I'm gonna just use the fill brush. So fill, I think I'm on Canon, aren't I? And it's white at the moment, so I'll go mid gray and press the fill button, no, no, we're on this one. <laughs> we'll get that wood color. Okay, so it's jumped across the other side as well. So it was sharing the UVs, so that's a good thing. So it's sharing the UVs because I had the mirror on when I unwrapped it. I did apply the mirror eventually, so they are actually separate objects, but their UVs are in the same place because when I pressed the unwrap button, the mirror was there, so the UVs went on top of each other. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do that. I'll do, uh, feed the original image. Um, lots of people asking, uh, suggesting lots of cool things. I'm just going to, um, when I texture paint, I like to have the roughness up high and the specular down. So it gives a really sort of matted look and then I can bring the highlights out when I'm painting. Uh, but you don't have to do that. I think that's probably a better brown is there. Okay, and remember you can sample your colors. So I've created a new color palette, press plus. And that's a nice brown, I think. It's a reasonable, good brown. Uh, right, uh, so let's go around the place. Uh, select the cannon. So I have to go to object mode, select the cannon, back to texture paint mode. Now, if you don't want to do that, what you can do is go to edit, lock object modes. Uh, now I can actually press alt click. And so I can alt click and I select the wheels and then put them into texture paint mode and start painting them. If I alt click the cannon, it goes to the last mode it was in. It was in texture paint mode, so I can now fill this in with a brown color, which I don't want. Fill it in with a, a mid gray, somewhere around there. Uh, sort of metallic, so metallic always goes slightly leaning to the blue, but uh, it depends whether we want a rusty one or not. It's a, it's a bit too far, just really slightly about there. That seems a bit greeny. I think you can zoom in, yeah, so same way. Control, middle mouse button can zoom in and help me out here a bit. There we go, it's sort of a bit of a telecky. Um, cool, okay, the bottom is gonna be, um, so Alt, uh, left click, and I can select it, turn it to texture paint mode, and fill it in with, I need to sample this color, so S to sample, left click, and it puts it in my color palette. But I want the brown for this bottom plate. Now the wheels have a brown bit on the outside and a metal bit on that bit there. Am I gonna have this wooden? That needs to be metal, so I'll Alt, left click on that. Now if I press Alt, left click like that, it's saying, well, which one do you want? Because they're all, I'm actually clicking on loads because they're right behind each other. So if I go here, Alt, left click, and I should have labeled it really, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, I'll do that another time. Um, now I need to, uh, then I can go to texture paint mode and then fill it in with that gray that I just picked from this. So sample, S to sample, click, and you create a palette and you can delete them there. And then let's fill that in. And that's sharing the UVs of the other one. So that's good, that's what we want. I think these ones, shall these be metal or wood? I think wooden is gonna look quite cool. So I'm up for that personally. What do you reckon? Right, so um, let's see if anybody's asking any questions. Remember to at Grant Abbott if you want to ask any questions. <laughs> um, for what reason are uh, why feign this? Not sure what that means. Um, uh, where are you from? Are you talking about me? I'm from Ipswich uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, 
Tristan, uh, how, howdy Grant, been watching your videos for the past week or so and found them really helpful. Looking forward to many more hours of great content, cool stuff. Uh, no, Atlas Empires, working on Atlas Empires is finished for me uh, and I think they're gonna release it any moment now. It could be a stone cannon. Yep. What is object offset? Uh, it can mean lots of different things and I'm not sure in this particular context what you mean. Um, so be specific. Uh, are you getting an error message or something like that? Uh, let me know, Pres Prashant. <laughs> uh, yes, this is a Corona killer uh, cannon. <laughs> uh, so yeah, be specific, uh, Prashant. What do you mean by off object offset? Uh, when should you use shade smooth? Uh, you should shade smooth when you're ready to. So I like to keep it flat for now so I can see the edges. So let's let's work on the cannon. So uh, texture paint. And you, again, you don't have to go this detail, but you can do the first stage and that you'll find it um, helpful in my opinion. So Alt, left click, to click on that and make sure I've got that color selected. And let's just uh, put some shading in. So I'll go a bit dark with my brush uh, let's hopefully we'll make the, um, yeah, this is the final topology. Uh, it's, uh, half four here. So we're nearing the end of my stream. Uh, so brush nice and big and, oh, uh, in, in, uh, paint mode, not fill mode. So I need to get that color again. So somewhere around there and we can fill in and make this nice and dark. I've got my brush on pen pressure. So it will fill it in. So nice and dark in the middle there as if we sort of can't see to the end. And then gradually coming out. Uh, quite light pen, pen pressure on this bit. And um, have I got mirror on? Yes, I have. Yep. So it should be mirroring across the x-axis, which it is, that's good. And just come around there, offer a tiny bit of, and I can isolate this at any time with forward slash on my numpad. I can just come in here and isolate it and create some shading. Just make my brush slightly bigger. A bit across there. So just shade in and it it's already it's looking okay, isn't it? It's got a sort of nice look about it. Add a tiny bit of shading at the bottom here, but remember we might animate it so it might move a bit. But generally speaking, the light's gonna come from here. And it's not it probably go up to this point and down to that point, so it won't go too far, but you have to think about that. Uh, I'm not using oh I am it do you know I didn't realise I was using multiply. Um, but I was think I w wasn't exp um, didn't have to. I just made the color darker anyway, so we don't have to do that. But um, I'd rather not use multiply, and that's why it's coming out so dark. I was thinking it's coming out very dark for some reason. But you just pretend and carry on, and it doesn't matter. Um, but you can yeah. So you just use mix, and you can just bring the color up and down. If you use multiply, then it will keep multiplying every time you apply the brush. So I brush and then leave it. Brush then leave it. It will keep adding that multiply. Okay, so um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I could use lighting, but when we're doing uh, low poly work, and let's have a look at some of these. Uh, so let's, uh, I mean, yes, you, you can get away with uh, procedurally texturing it, um, or you can sort of uh, use this sort of painted style like this. Uh, I'm sort of going for a more painted style, but you can, you can use uh, lighting if you want, yep. Um, this will work either way. I find it's helpful um, because where you hear when I just added the texture straight to it and it looked really flat. So that's what you'll get. And even if you add lighting, it will still look quite flat, but here we can sort of adapt it slightly. So if I go to, still on my mix brush, go to a nice light gray and press F and just go around. Again, I've got symmetry on. So symmetry, I think I could probably do it in the wire if it's the local. Sometimes it's, I forget whether it's the local or not. I'm not sure we can, no, it is the global. Um, so this will go across the X though. So we can just highlight it there. Okay, come around there. And in here, just, and you can see in my screen, hopefully, uh, in fact, I'll move this across so you've got more space to see, um, that I'm just uh, brush, I'm using my Wacom tablet to brush around these points. And so this is quite simple, nothing too complicated here. Uh, just highlighting that a bit more around there. Okay, and just this bit as well. 
So this is where you sort of highlight the edges. It's like a cavity mask in a sense, and you do it by hand. So really simple shading there, and it looks like stone at the moment. I'm not gonna make it really complicated and do metal and stuff. Um, but now if we go to object mode quickly, right click shade smooth, you can see it looks kind of nice. Uh, so remember that sort of other texture we had? In fact, I'm gonna duplicate this shift D, move it off in the X, give this a different, um, material just don't you don't follow along with this uh, new material Canon one and undo that and uh, let's open up so we got what we had before hey where's text just gone cancel that in fact I'll grab it because it's just there isn't it so I'll grab that pull that in and hook that up instead so that's what your textures are going to look like if you just add them in like that okay whereas this one uh, just seeing if we're all okay. Yep, we are. Um, we've got much more character to it because we're painting that on ourselves. And we can also then, I mean, yes, we can change some things with lighting. So where are my lights? There should be some lights in the scene. Let's just see. Oh, maybe in texture paint mode we don't have them. So let's go back to layout mode. So we, oh, it's isolation mode. That was it. So uh, then we can start lighting, I suppose, and use our scene lights with our render. And yes, we've got, I'll put my overlay back on. So yeah, we can start thinking about lighting. It's got some shade, but our, our one over here has lots more character because we painted that in. Okay, so hopefully that sort of makes some sense. I'll just delete that light and delete this. Um, and back to texture paint mode. Okay, so I'm in isolation mode still. Uh, and there's a bit of glitching going on. If you, can you see how here it's sort of um, got some white bit for some reason? You can smudge that out with go to texture paint mode, you've got a smudge button there. So um, F, and you can smudge that out if you're having problems. Um, now the top might be a bit lighter than the bottom, so I can, um, and you don't, it, this is as far as you need to go for each of your objects. So if I go back to object mode, uh, so you can just highlight the edges and uh, darken areas up and it will give a nice look and it will look cool. Um, Maybe I shouldn't go too much further with this actually, and we'll just keep it really simple. So on the wood, uh, let's isolate it and text paint mode. There's, there's a few questions coming through. I have basic doubt, please clarify. One does hand painting and add shadows in places required quite often. You don't uh, have to, you can do it with lighting, but you add a little bit of ambient occlusion and a little bit of highlights so where the light's going to hit edges so it's the same as a cavity mask if you were to bake from a normal map i'm um, sorry bake from a high poly uh, so yeah um, you you do a bit of coloring in a bit of shading as if you're just drawing you can just block it in a color if you want and leave it that's fine and that'll give you a nice uh, low poly cool style but we're doing a sort of the extra level okay uh, might have gone a bit too far with the detail here actually um, uh, so hopefully I'm not I'm not lost loads of people in how we're doing things, but this is a this is sort of um, the technique that I would use uh, to paint this. Um, some people use texture masks, uh, which I'll very quickly go through, um, uh, very quickly. But I've got other videos on this. I'll just pull out a screen here. Instead of a brush, you can use if we go down here, you can use a texture. So I create a new texture go to my texture panel, which is down here. So I'm just duplicating that screen so you can see what's going on. And you can open up. And like I said, I've got videos on this as well, using textures as um, to paint with. You can open up and find uh, a wood texture. So I'll quickly find that. That's gonna take me a second. Where are you? There you are, okay, wood texture, come on, wood texture thumbnails that will do that one okay so I've got a wood texture there and it's come in here now I can change this instead of tiled I can change it to stencil and it brings up this stencil so let's go to side view now and then right click to move it and I use my the other button on my pen is right click so I can move stencils around and then I can just paint over this uh, I could turn the strength up a bit actually there we go so you can paint on your object and look, it looks like wood. How about that, eh? Beautiful. Probably needs to, uh, let's go to side view again. I can scale this up with right click and shift. Scale it up quite big. Somewhere around there. Don't know if that's gonna work, but we'll see. There we go. 
and you can get rid of the stencil by just pressing cross it's still there because I can still choose it uh, but it's got rid of it because I press cross so I can bring it back press the cross to get rid of it and this is in the texture mode okay I'll just get rid of this now oh, right click in the middle join areas and move this back across okay so you can have that sort of style and paint it over your Canon if you like Let's see what that looks like I mean, it looks kind of funny doesn't it <laughs> it doesn't look that bad and you could even use this for a base for painting because you can now paint over this even further but use this as your sort of wood material if you wanted to and it's on the other side there because they're sharing the UVs so there's a couple of ways you can take <laughs> it looks quite funny actually I think it looks kind of cute uh, other than difficulty slash work amount is there any reason not to use textures to create bum map bump map normal map uh, yeah Eevee doesn't like it cycles is okay with it uh, but normal maps are slightly better they're more accurate because they calculate the three different angles whereas a bump map is in or out uh, normal maps think about the light and where it, which angle it's coming from as I understand I mean that's a very simplistic way of talking about it there's a wood procedural in blender now is there is there really didn't know that cool man oh, that looks awesome thanks <laughs> looks like a puzzle piece yeah <laughs> I'm kind of liking this sort of style uh, so yeah you can have some fun uh, painting those on uh, or you can have some fun uh, painting the textures in I'll spend a few more minutes just painting now uh, yeah the um, the A15 was it it's not Huey on it's the other one uh, not UG either uh, I know I know what you mean the A15 from the other company that don't do them uh, but they're good uh, yeah there is actually an affiliate link on my website for that version I think I think there is I'm um, at the XP pen which I affiliate to as well but um, it doesn't offer much in affiliates but it would I suppose I ought to be a bit more precise with all these things I probably should have a page about graphics tablets and have all the affiliates and stuff in there um, what reason for EV rather than cycles much faster to render uh, yep so if I go to cycles now uh, watch as this count goes up over here and it takes that time whereas Eevee instant because it's based on a game engine um, lighting ray, not ray tracing what's it called it's got called something else but yeah uh, okay so I'll just continue painting uh, I'm reluctant to scrub this out now because I think it looks quite cool I, in fact I like the colors from this so what I'm going to do I'm in texture paint mode uh, with the yep so back to my painting tab which is at the top here uh, I'm going to scale this down just a touch and move these across a bit there we go I'll go into isolation mode uh, and I'm going to sample a few of these colors so uh, sample tap and just around the place sample a few to get a few sort of wood colors across here it's interesting really because they look really dull and gray there but they look quite vibrant here fascinating isn't it? Yeah, you see that one looks so different from that I'm assuming I am grabbing it. Yeah, look at that. Looks so different. Um, path tracing. Thank you, James Green. Oh, one of my students was able to answer that one. Oh, he's a bit of a genius, James Green, aren't you? How about that? Subdivided again. I haven't subdivided it once. It's low poly for games. Okay, so um, I know this kind of looks fun, but I'm actually going to scrub over it with some colors. Um, so I've got uh, strength is up to one and do I want to not in the Z but do I want to in the Y no I don't I don't um, so let's get some a few colors just go across it like this right so I'll grab that one that's my color picker go a bit darker Gonna make it sort of stylized. Uh, a bit more red in there. Yeah, did not mean to do that. And a tiny bit more. Oh, so I'm going away from these colors a bit. Is um, yeah, yeah, that's all right. 
I was hoping it was sort of mirror to the inside. Ah, that's interesting. So it's not completely mirrored. It's mirrored there, but not there. But the other one did. So they are separate. I might just duplicate the object afterwards. Uh, delete this one, duplicate it, so I can copy the UVs. Because there's no point in them being different, really. Um, why did it do it for the other one and not for this one? Hmm, I'm confused. Should I buy a tablet without screen and uh, whack on medium or large? The bigger you can get, the better. It does help. It's just that little bit easier, it's got to be said. But um, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference to size. The screen is really helpful. If you're really serious about digital art, then get a screen, yeah. A screen tablet It's massively advantageous. Because I don't, if I'm moving around like this, I can move my arm and shoulder, but you can't do that on a one that's on the, because your hand-eye coordination goes weird and you can't follow the strokes right. It does, does make it a lot easier. Okay, so um, if you're following along, you can uh, follow with me. I'm going to the multiply brush, going fairly dark, and I'm just going to create some wooden planks in here, like this. So let's uh, think about the size of that and then the size of this. I suppose we go across here. And then there. So we've got our wooden plank there. That looked a bit rubbish though, so let's do that again. I'm rushing a bit now because I'm I'm sort of thinking about the time and how much time I've spent doing this. Don't want to spend too long on the students, they're not worth it. <laughs> uh, I'm, su I'm surprised James you're still here, well done for keep keeping going. I assumed um, others would be, would, well, just the flagging by now. So we don't usually do this much in a lesson, um, but we might as well on the stream. So I'm creating some of those sort of notches. And let's just change the, oh, not that far. Bit of variation's good, but not quite that much. Oh, that is a bit too much still. Right, so screen, screen brush, a bit lighter. And let's go smaller with my detail now. So I'm not sure about this actually. Not sure about that color. Okay, it's not looking too bad. We can go down the edge here as well. Give it some sort of um, highlight. And up the edge here, so it's catching the light, just the edge of the wood. Especially on that corner there, it's catching a bit of light. Uh, maybe a tiny bit of wear down the bottom here, so it's seeing a bit of highlight there as well. It's basically just going around the edges. I'm making that a bit wobbly. Notice I'm still on flat shading, that's why we're seeing a really sharp line down there. And remember the top, uh, because the light's coming from the top, that's going to be a bit lighter, so I can make that a fair bit lighter. It's quite a high brush, but I'm just going to go across and down with a light brush. Okay, so doing a bit of painting now. Uh, you, again, you don't have to go this far, but uh, I mean, it's not actually looking that great, is it? <laughs> I think it's too dark in the, these areas. Uh, it's difficult to get rid of that, but you can go screen and then through it a few times and then you can sort of get rid of that. It's a different sort of color tone than I would normally use and it's throwing me a little bit I must admit. Let's go to multiply again and do some notches maybe in here. Uh, now remember you're mirrored so you might for fine details um, do I want to do a... Uh, we want to turn off the mirror Turn the brush up a little bit. I suppose I wanted this to mirror to this side, really, didn't I? Little notches like this, always quite cool. Right, let's uh, come out of the shading mode now. Let's go back to object mode, right click, shade smooth. Okay, so we're seeing it a bit more like how it will 
look eventually and we can start tidying this complete monstrosity up it's not particularly good actually I don't like it um, let's go to the light brush now screen actually let's just color pick that's a bit quicker so I can just press S and it will sample that color am I still on multiply though let's go back to mix S to sample and then I can just sample that color I can always quickly put it a bit brighter as well if I want to speed things up so we've got a little notch in there can you see that idea the notch in the wood and we need a bit of this color so sample just s don't tap so s and tap is to add it to your palette but you can just press s and it will copy that color i'll put the strength up for this and i might have to get a touch darker so a really fine dark line in here going through I'm not too worried about the inside here, so that can look a little bit ropey. <laughs> because we're not going to see it that well. Don't like that. You can start to see the pixels a bit there because I'm so zoomed in. And that's where, if you, if you saw that and you were zoomed out, then you might have problems with your UVs or your texture resolution just isn't cutting it. So you need to make it a 4K texture instead of a 1K texture, which would be crazy, really, for um, sort of low poly like this. That seems a bit too dark for me. Hmm, why, why are we loading? I suppose I ought to save. I don't know. So I haven't been looking at the chat. Um, how's it look with smooth shading? We are on smooth shading. Actually, oh, looks weird though. Looks like we've got the lights affecting it. Let's just quickly uh, rotation. Yeah, I mean, it looks a little bit weird, but let's go back to there. We go, that looks all right like that, doesn't it? With everything else in the scene, it looks all right ish. Kind of working, isn't it? Um, Thank you very much, uh, Hanos XMS help or something. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. I feel like I'm rushing this bit actually because I, um, I've gone over my time really. I, I allotted to this um, and I need to get on with a few other things. So I do really feel like I'm rushing a bit and that's not the best really, is it? Um, uh, where were we? Um, what was I doing? Du -du -du. I was doing something. I feel like this highlight needs a bit more, so let's. I'll just finish this section so you can see the techniques I'm using to paint. So I'm just going to go across here, go a little bit brighter, a little bit more colour in there, and it looks like there's a line down there, doesn't there? And there could well be. It could be badly painted like that, but hopefully I'll get away with it. I've got a little bit more yellowy here, haven't I? And I think that will just give it a bit more of a cartoony look, which is what I'm after. I'm going to undo that because I don't need such a strong highlight on the top there, just a little highlight there, but a much stronger one here because that's where the light hits, obviously. Going along the edge, hitting the edge here, such like that. A nice highlight there, nice highlight coming there, and the same in here. Not so much seen in here, but we'll still put it in. Can you see? I'm I'm actually purposely wobbling the texture because it's uh, the wood is gonna. Uh, <laughs> well, wood is wobbly, <laughs> wibbly wobbly. One of my catchphrases. Sorry about that. I'm going a bit quiet, aren't I? Um, and not looking at the stream. Well, that sometimes happens because I, I painted here and it stretches across there, so watch out for that. I'm just going to undo that again because a little bit wibbly wobbly, but not crazy wibbly wobbly.
don't like that. <laughs> Keep making mistakes because I'm rushing. Okay, I'm just going to try and finish these bits and make it look a little bit better. All right, there we go. It's looking a touch better, isn't it? A bit like wood in places, except for this bit here. Okay, let's answer a few questions. Um, you're making it from white oak, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing, Corey. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I suppose it is sort of a whitish oak. Uh, it's got a yellowy tinge to it, though, hasn't it? Now, um, when did you write that message? Which Hueon do you recommend with screen? I can't remember. Oh, is it Hueon Canvas with the K? I think they're the better ones. Uh, Hueon Canvas Pro. Uh, I've heard good things. I think that's right anyway. Um, and just having a look at what people are saying. No, oh, I think we're getting there. Um, cool. Um, okay, so uh, that's a two hours and two and a half hours there. You've got an extra long uh, special lesson. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, um, I always uh, put these lessons, I'll put these in a low poly assets playlist, I think, uh, low poly assets live playlist. And then um, um, I could possibly put to a time lapse of finishing the rest of it, I suppose. Um, maybe. If you're interested, or I could do another stream. Are people interested in another stream for me finishing this off? It'll just be me painting, uh, but you can have a look if you like. Uh, maybe I'll do something of that tomorrow morning if people are interested. XP Pen Artist Pro, apparently that's a good one as well. Um, you just whack them at school. Yeah, yeah I, there's not a lot of difference between them. We've, we use Wacom at work now because they're just a bit more compatible. Um, so it, it's just easier for the IT guys to set them up. But in reality, um, if you're just at home and you're using a single driver, you should be fine. Stream sounds good. Yeah, we need more texturing tutorials. Yep. Another stream, cool. I stream the finish. Um, I suppose no one's going to say, no, I don't really want another stream, so. <laughs> um, I'll try and do one tomorrow morning, okay. Um, uh, have you separated the UVs for the mirrored parts? Some some of them I have, I thought I had, and some of them I haven't. So that's a bit of a mess, that is. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter too much. It, obviously, you've just got to consider that they are going to look exactly the same. I was thinking about mirroring this at first, so this side being exactly the same as the other side, and I changed my mind in the end because this is actually going to be a lot darker because it's much closer. There's more ambient occlusion in there. You can do it, but it just won't look as with much... Uh, it won't feel as if it's got as much depth. Uh, thanks very much. Second favourite. <laughs> Uh, John Niment, uh, you you don't want a new stream, uh, another stream. <laughs> uh, so you may, uh, other people might want me to move on to other things. I was thinking of doing one tomorrow afternoon for maybe an animated toilet roll. <laughs> uh, we'll see how we get on with that. It might be tough, but we'll we'll have a go. I have got some other work to do, so it might be just be a bit too much. Um, but we'll see. I've got a stream on Friday as well, uh, but that'll be from four till six on the Friday. Um, Thank you, Vickers. <laughs> Appreciated. Uh, the Lixen. The Lixen. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, awesome stuff. Um, okay, so... Um, oh, yeah. L oh, we haven't looked at the Discord for a little while, have we? Okay. Oh, look at this one. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Loving it. That's great, isn't it? Well done to uh, a Canaro. That's really cool. Uh, that is really nice. I love that. Nice. Well done, Rob Russell. Oh, look at this. That is awful, Lewis Thorpe. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that for a cannonball. This is quite an interesting one, isn't it? I like the the bullhorns there. And we've seen this, haven't we? Yep, so really nice work. Lewis Thorpe, you have... I'm taking any stickers away that you had. You've got a demerit. <laughs> uh, Rob Russell, looking cool. Uh, there's the UV unwrap, and it's all nice and clean, isn't it? Just watch that um, they're not too close when you're texture painting, but should be fine. Um, uh, and, and liking this. Uh, the bull horns. Uh, yep, maybe. Um, I mean, when they're curved like this, the conformal doesn't usually work either, so it's a tough one with unwrapping. Uh, Rob uh, Russell loved this. Uh, looking really decent, isn't it? And it makes a difference when you're using those wood textures. But can you see, if you you could then uh, paint on some of this, you could bake it and then paint it, but that's quite a complex process. Don't worry too much about that. But there's the sort of metal cannon as well. It's looking quite good, isn't it? A bit more, possibly a bit more ambient occlusion just to really... Uh, make these bits separate out 
Um, but that's where the difference between texture painting and just normal texturing will happen. Uh, so it's cool. Can you tell us when you are going to stream tomorrow? Uh, just to be ready and be the first person. <laughs> um, so let me think. Um, so I'll finish this off at... So, yeah, I've got a bit of freelance stuff to do. Uh, so I'll definitely stream from four till, it might be either three to five, I'll mention this in the morning, three to five or four to six. So, so in the afternoon spot, this is GMT. So about similar time to what we did today. And I'll be doing that animated toilet roll, I think. Um, is, uh, I mean, things might change. I've, I haven't really looked at my schedule and stuff, but I have got a bit of freelance work to do as well. And I've still got Node School. I've got to do a video on that as well tomorrow. Cool, it's gonna be a tough one. So I might not find time to fit this in, but if I do, uh, the end of this texture painting, it will be uh, from about 10 o'clock tomorrow, GMT. So from now, we are looking at, uh, what are we, five, 15 hours from now. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Um, uh, hopefully people enjoyed the sort of following along aspects. Let's uh, just quickly uh, see this nice one from Night Nemo. Oh, UVs are broken. So that means you may not have unwrapped something properly somewhere in here. Um, or um, you can go up here to UV pack islands okay hopefully that makes sense for night nemo uh oh correct it there we go you've got it you've figured it out yep it's very high distance between them so you might want to lower the island margins looks good though looking good this is quite fun isn't it I'm absolutely loving the progress people have made this one is really cool isn't it and looking forward to see how many texts of that that's that's a good one isn't it i love these little rivets here oh it's good stuff isn't it very sort of very mechanical looking and yeah, it's just lovely love it Okay, uh, let's see some other ones. Oh, yes, look at that. Is that, uh, it's James G, so I'm James Green, I'm assuming. Uh, it's looking, oh, look, at it. even got that. Uh, loving it. Oh, it's good stuff, isn't it? Looking cool. Uh, and oh, Two. <laughs> uh, why not have two? This is, oh, yeah, here we go, textures. Oh, it's, oh I'm going to open the original on that one so I can see it in its full glory. Uh, I feel like I want to go full screen, but that, that won't take me there, will it? No, that's not. That's something to do with um, Pinterest. You know? That's really cool, though, isn't it? Lovely stuff. I like the style as well. It's looking cool. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, we're there. Uh, <laughs> just got to render. Quick, quick, render. What are we, five o'clock? That was a few minutes ago. It's got to be quick now. Got to be quick. Uh, oh, slow mo uh, mode is enabled. How do I get rid of that? Oh, it's every five seconds, so that's all right. Just stop bots. Uh, just having a quick look at the chat as well, making sure. Any questions? Um. <laughs> it's nice uh, that people are enjoying other people's work. That's cool. Screen, stream the finish. So lots of people are saying that, so I'll probably do that. Oh. <laughs> uh. So I've said the time uh, for tomorrow's stream. I demand more Abbott original concept art. Uh, I'm not so sure whether that's a good idea. <laughs> How about some cracks in the wood? Yes. I mean, we did have um, some around here. That's sort of like a notch and a crack. But maybe I'll add a bit more detail. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I need to tidy this up a bit. It needs to go further, doesn't it? I'm having issues converting my game essay into the game. Do you mean assets into the game? which is compatible. <laughs> uh, we're not building any viruses. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, concept coasters there. Uh, let me know. Uh, still waiting for more here. Uh, Century Moon, where is it? It's a big render. What? <laughs> sure. Okay, so that is asset. Having issues converting my as game asset into the game. Well, maybe we'll quickly do that as well. At the end of it, I'll save it all and I'll put it into Unity. Yep, hopefully. Um, I haven't opened Unity for ages, so hopefully that'll work. Um, <laughs> yes, the White Wolf will stream tomorrow. It's going to be around 10 o'clock GMT and there'll be one in the evening as well, about 4 o'clock. Might be overdoing it on the streaming, so we'll see um, how I get on. But I'd like to finish this off, so we'll, we'll try and do that. Maybe I'll miss out the toilet roll for next time. Uh, that sounds like a good fun one, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so it's uh, literally what I'll do <laughs> is select all this, 
In fact, I can do it really quickly now. So let's go to layout mode. Ooh, that looks weird, doesn't it? There he is. Uh, so select all this. Uh, file, export, FBX. It can be an OBJ as well, but FBX. And uh, you get this sort of menu. And you just tick on selected objects and give it a name. Canon Stylized 2, <laughs> export, and then you open up in Unity. And the last thing you do is make sure you save. Oh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to save my texture then. Save as. Make sure you save your textures. Save as, and I'm just saving it as Canon Color in here. Um, and yeah, you take that Canon Color texture, which I just showed you. I'll just bring that up again. Um, you take that Canon Color and plug it into your Albedo, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and it should work. Um, okay, uh, last look at the Discord then. Oh, Cedric, come on, come on. <laughs> I don't want to just cut you off. Uh, but we, I suppose we could, uh, we, I suppose I'll show all these at the beginning of the next stream and see how people are getting on. So your homework, <laughs> your homework people is to uh, text your cat and, and uh, what I wanted to see for the next Discord time is put this onto some sort of diorama. So if you don't know what diorama means, look that up, but it's basically a floating island. So it's going to be on a little floating island. Try that out. Um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Mick Dad. Uh, concept coasters. Uh, yeah, so hopefully um, that will make sense for your concept coasters. Hopefully. Um, okay, uh, let's quickly last look at Discord. I might have to miss you. Oh, is Century Moon is typing? Oh, that's really slow. Uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll view it next time. So tomorrow morning, don't worry. Yeah, uh, we'll be there. So you're getting homework. So um, all got that? All got the homework? Um, uh, let me know if you're going to do the homework. So type yes. Yes, I'm going to do the homework. Um, next stream, hopefully tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. All going well. Um, hey, Kyle. Look at that. looks cool, actually. I really like that one. It's lovely, isn't it? I actually really like the flat, the fact that it's flat shaded like this. Looks really cool, isn't it? Thanks, Lewis. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's been really good fun, actually, hasn't it? Uh, I don't have a lot of experiences doing skyboxes. Yes, yes, yes. I'll try. Thank God. <laughs> like that. Uh, excellent. Homework will be done. No dog ate homework. The excuses around here. Uh, what's the homework? Okay, the homework is uh, to put this onto a little diorama. So uh, a little floating island or something like that. Um, so maybe some fake grass, if you can get that far, or just a few rocks or something. And maybe undulate the ground a bit. And uh, so it's going to, and maybe there's going to be another floating island somewhere else and they're just battling it out. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, we'll leave it there. Just quickly check. There's no one else on the Discord. Uh, but I will look at the Discord next time uh, and you'll be first up there, Century Moon. Okay. So post your results and your homework in the live stream links info and I'll uh, go through it for next time. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody. It was great fun. If there's any students left, uh, like James uh, and Kyle, I think you're still here. Well done for making it all the way through. That's very impressive. So it was quite a long one today, wasn't it? Uh, good to see you all. And I will uh, hopefully um, see you tomorrow, uh, about 10, uh, if you're there. I'll probably do one in the afternoon as well. So it's going to be pretty hectic. We'll see how we get on. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. Uh,